Yo, 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 yer. What's good? It's your boy Doc On. This is your boy Came Sincere trying to fix his mic. Shout out to my nephew. You always talking shit, y'all. And this is another episode of the Always Talking Shit Show. Episode 33 to be exact. Episode 30 Drizzle. Hmm. Fuck's up, man. It's the only good Jay one. Fucking with everything. Yeah, it's all good. Shout out, shout out to you, nephew. Shit, that bright ass studio light. Trying to start these headaches. Turn that down for me. No, it's off. I mute it to watch it. Oh, okay, I just heard it. Just that. Yeah. Okay, I, was nah, gonna say. Nah, it, I was trying to mute it, but the button's so small in the corner. Last time. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck's going on out there? How the fuck y'all doing on this good old Wednesday evening? Episode 33 of the Always Talking Shit show is now in session, commencing. Uh, what's good with you, Kim? What's happening? I heard the stories had you ready to fight the second ago, hey man but. if you got a business in north las vegas man in north town respect the people all right you motherfuckers <laughs> getting on my nerves <laughs> i'm starting to, hey i'm serious bro i'm gonna start campaigning on you niggas in a minute man oh, damn. some of these motherfuckers out here man they just they don't don't take my my dollars for granted they don't take my business for granted right I'm, a, I'm the type of dude that i don't have to spend money with you it's never if i don't want to spend money with you i will drive 30 minutes to get to where I need to go, so I don't got to spend no money with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We'll leave it at that. Sorry, right. motherfuckers. No, motherfuckers don't play too much. Like, yeah. yeah, you own a fucking business out here. Like, how the fuck your shit don't work? Your shit ain't on point. The shit ain't how it's supposed to Who be. Who you hiring, too? Who right. You like, what the to, fuck to is going your on out when here? you leave and where you at? That shit matters, man. I can't stand back. Hey, before we start our show, like, is customer service dead? Like, is that like a myth? You remember, remember like, we're just old enough to remember the, that's that that term. The customer's always right. I don't think an 18-year-old ever heard that shit in their life. Nah, because you know, like, customer's always about? right actually doesn't even matter anymore. That's not even a thing. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not what you used to think it was. I was just telling my mother that. I was like, Mom, you know, you gotta understand. Like, these cats, that's, well, do they you don't know, even teach customer service do you in, know who in killed that? of employment. Do you know who killed the customer always right? Who? Karen's. Yeah. Because I want to see the manager and my, the customers. That shit died with them, bro. You can, the motherfuckers only hear that so much where it's like, nah, you're not right, actually. You're, you're quite fucking wrong, and now we're going to yeah. stand up for ourselves. Some of this shit is just wild. Like, yeah, some of these businesses really do exploit communities. They really do come set up shop in your community, don't give a fuck about you, wouldn't give a fuck if you had a, man, let me calm down. No, that's, I'm not. Let me calm down. I'm going to keep it real. That's I'm wilding. No. I'm a little angry. I'm a little aggressive. We, we come from areas where <coughs> motherfuckers damn, come into you. Motherfucking people of not your culture come in, own shops and shit, but can't stand the motherfuckers that they're selling Stuff their to. goods to and shit. It's like, hey, come on, bro. Like, I, we supposed... Ah, whatever, man. Whatever. <coughs> whatever. Do the right thing and tell you that easy. That motherfucking Asian store, nigga. Or remember that case back in L.A. The the Korean woman killed the little black girl for says she was stealing or whatever. Yeah, just rest rest in peace to Natasha. Um, but it ain't even just like I'm talking. Man, see the thing is, corporations do it, and they set the blueprint for other cultures. Right. So there is a there is a thing where other cultures will spot the black community and be like, yeah, I'm gonna go there because. The regulations are laxed. Like, yeah. I don't have to, I don't give a fuck if the milk expires two days after I sell it to them or, right. you know, if this and this and this. So, it's just certain things, man. But, hey, my mother always told me, she used to say, son, you have to teach people how to treat you. I live by that. That's I, real. I will show you how to how to respect me. Nigga. Right, yeah, I'm going to show you exactly how you should it. treat me because you don't, you don't when I smack you in the mouth, you're going to know. Don't do that no more. Shit, I wasn't even talking on no on no physical shit. I mean, <laughs> but that's part that's part of it. Right. That's, that's part of the element. But I mean, more so is, fam. I don't give. You don't have to. I don't care who you are. Respect is something that is gonna be a part of our our, our equation. Or else we just not gonna have no math, nigga. I'm not gonna be around you. 
You gonna look up? I thought me. I thought you was cool with King. What that nigga? He don't fuck around with me. He don't be with nigga. Nah, he don't be with me. Females, I. Right? No female can really say that I've ever had a relationship with her that was just built on lack of respect. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't just sit there and disrespect you. You know, ain't nobody gonna just sit there and dis- disrespect me, especially in a business sense. Like nigga, if I'm bringing my hard earned money in a pandemic. To you. you know what I'm saying? Right. This shit. You appreciate my shit. <coughs> you still ain't got nothing for Dieter, huh? Man, I don't even talk. Who? Who's that? Who's Dieter? <laughs> All these niggas want me to do is ask for some, you know, nah. Yeah, why do I have to keep coming with my bull like, sir, can I have some more out this motherfucker? Like, that's money that I've paid in taxes. It's all good. That bro. shit that's, I belong, like, like yeah, all this Biden shit that's about to go through for the extra little, like, 600 they're talking about bringing back, that don't even pertain to people like me and him, nigga. We're stuck in a system that don't give a fuck about trying to pay us anything. And the thing is, and they're getting away with it. I, see, it's designed for them to get away with it because the people are weak. See, I'm not one of those naive people that, like, all American people are so strong. Yeah, not No, at they're all. not. 1,500 motherfuckers have been raping us for over 300 years. The 1%, go do the math. It's probably like, the 1%, honestly, is probably about 3,500 families. <coughs> right. And they run this whole shit. They run the whole shit. They told shit. us to stop working. They told us, we can't do no work. Can't get no, and then. While Jeff Bezos out here come on, getting bro. more wealth, being the becoming the richest almost human in Amer- in the world right now. I mean the one the richest documented human because we know there's hella well, sultans the and governor. shit out there that don't you got even. The governor like of I think it was California, mm-hmm. who shut down the schools, rightfully so. But then you find out that his kids are still going to school, right? So there's certain kids that they're still going to school and they're not missing anything out on their education. yeah they're not missing a beat. There's other kids that was like oh no go home. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he said like, yeah go to the house. At the end of the day, y'all just gonna work for our kids anyway. Yeah, that's that's the fucking that's the reality of it right. for sure. We're just nigga. gonna work for our children anyway. So, hey, I just say, man, as you get older, you have to unlearn all the bullshit they taught you when you were a child. As you get more intelligent, you have to unlearn all the bullshit they taught you when you were dumb. Yeah. So educate yourself and pass that shit on to your community. Because the the education you're getting now is just the dumbing down of what you potentially can be as it, a grown man. Teaching as a you grown how to man. be an employee. My bad. Yeah, it's yeah, it's teaching you how to be a slave. Yeah, that's right. We really do. It's teaching you how to be a slave, bro. That's all it's teaching you. <coughs> Especially if you go to inner city schools where the teachers really don't even give a fuck about you. You're literally just a tally on the paycheck. This is my thing. I don't think <coughs> a teacher, a police officer, a district attorney, a senator or a congressman should ever be able to not live in the very heart of the district and neighborhood that they represent. Nah, that's real. Yeah, and see, yeah. Why and, you get and where they got away with this away, is, bro. where they got away with this is, fam, they start redlining. Yeah. Everybody pay attention to the word redlining. Go look that <clears> up. <throat> nah, because, you, you know, people say counties, redlining is a myth. <laughs> they nah, say redlining me, don't exist. Me, coughing. That's bad. Okay. Projects. The reason they're called projects is because it was a project to see no. if they get all the black people it's, in one motherfucking area. Nah, it, it starts. It started way before just black people. They didn't build those projects for black people originally. They built those black people for Italians and certain immigrants that they deemed um, unworthy of white privilege. Right. Right. See, because white people had their own version of uh, tribalism in Europe. Right. They don't just look at themselves blanketly as all Europeans. Like, like they, they have their own individual cultures and beliefs and stuff like that. So that's just more proof that, mo- like, you know, humans are more alike than not alike. Right. But it's just a mental block. So, like, you're right. The projects was a project. How do you get people to, to be reduced socially while providing to the very, like, You good? You want some more room? Because I was hell in the middle. Yeah, that's cool, my nigga. You know, I'm just I'm trying, to, trying to rock with you, bro. I'm just getting there. <coughs> getting there well, no, because I was over here realizing I'm, like, in the middle of the thing, and you're over there. So I'm I like, do, I don't want to argue with you. I <laughs> think I'm tripping. I'll just leave it alone. But the project thing, you know, that's real. That's right. A, that's a real thing. But, like, the redlining that I was speaking to 
is if you look at some of these maps of cities and districts, mm -hmm. the shapes don't even make sense. Like, why, <laughs> man, why is it why is it shaped like that? Yeah. That way, why is that, it not straight the way they like, do it like that? Is so that that, is. that one uh corner of the tip is a very wealthy suburban area and it allows <coughs> it allows for for any person in that suburban area to run and control all of you all. Right. They have no loyalty to your community. Their kids don't go to school with your kids. They kids don't, don't even know your kids. They don't kids. go to church where you go to church. They, they don't, don't shop, shop where you shop. Like, that's why. That's they got why a whole different mall out there. That's why stuff is fucked up, man. Because you got misrepresentation all through the all through the country. Mm -hmm. All through the country. Like, Senator Manchin is not a Democrat. No. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And you see, it looks like all oh, the Democrats have the majority, but no, they don't. They have this one guy that really is a Republican. He's, Democrat, he's a Democrat by uh, name by, only, by like name they say only. Yeah. Republicans, right? He's so a Democrat by name only. It's just only. one of those things where you just have to. It's a chess match. I used to watch Obama go through that, and people would be like, "Why is he?" I'm like, "Dog, he's like fighting racism in the Democratic Party and the Republican Party." Right. Like, and not even all racism, like. I don't know if it's like a, a corporatism mm -hmm. or like a elitism, if you would. Some fighting it's elitism. They want to turn this country into the haves and the have nots. That's always been the agenda. Can I go out. They don't want to make it like a I think the middle class is threatening to wealthy people. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately. I, I, I truly don't get it, fam. I it's truly don't get it. It's because the middle class represents as a threat because being middle class means that you have access. You're one step away. Yeah. You're one step away. You are one business move away from being elite. You feel me? Yeah, they don't I'm... like that. They don't want a whole country of one step away from being elite because that potentially puts them at risk for losing to somebody who does maybe what they do better and cheaper. It's a fact. You ready to get this started, man? Let's go. All right, so our first topic on the board, episode three. <clears throat> three? Almost said 333. Tres, tres. Tres, tres. So you put me on to this. We just was watching some, some clips. Mm -hmm. So allegedly, Gen <coughs> X. Was it Gen Z? Yes, sir. Gen Z is trying to cancel Slim Shady. They not feeling them. And the millennials. And uh, and the weakest of the millennials. Oh, my God. We saw some of the most <laughs> the wackiest of the millennials on that shit. Are out to defend them. First, I seen this one white girl do a rap. The shit was terrible. It was horrible. Do you want to show it to him? You know I can show it to him, right? That's the beauty of this Don't live show shit. show it to him, man. I can show it to him. Hold on, y'all. We're going to show it to him. Why are you pulling that up, man? Go ahead and let him in on it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a few people. I guess they decided they're going to get at these young people and put them in their place. Now, this is where I have a problem with it. I tell everyone of a certain age and everyone that's cut from a certain cloth to leave the Internet alone. Leave your upset energy and your disappointment. Leave it off the Internet because when you're of a certain age and cut from a certain Look for the home, Well Health Safety Seal outside. Beefing with these young people on the internet. You look like a goof, man. Like, they just do it better. Some of us are not cut out to be beefing on the internet. It just don't work, man. And they they tried to defend him and them, but they damn near probably just helped him get canceled by these young people. These young people don't want to hear that shit. Shout out to Shady. All right. So. That's crazy. You guys see the video right here. Go ahead, press play. Uh, play it for you. And feel safer going inside. Is that Jay Rowan? What? Gen Z's trying to what? Cancel Eminem. Gen Z's trying to cancel Eminem? Honey, that's cute. Listen, little kitties, let me make this quite clear. This man was around even before you were here. So what, you're all mad because the man was a lyricist while all your rappers are a mumbling gibberish? No, go ahead and shut your mouth. Better yet, go and sit your ass in time out because boy was running laps even before you could walk. Hell, boy was spitting balls even before you could talk. So no, afraid you're null in, boy, dear. I'm afraid your opinion don't matter here because one day you'll grow up and see how everyone went and forgot about Z. So, that's 
So, this is the, uh, these are the people coming to the defense of <coughs> Eminem. That's sad. These are the millennials, because we are millennials. These are the millennials <laughs> that are... <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Hey, let them know who millennials are. So millennials are anybody born between the years of 1981 and 1996. A lot of the people that we grew up with, a lot of people that watch this show, you are millennials. And you don't know it. A lot of us didn't know that. Because <laughs> I, I fight with it a lot to think that I'm from the millennial fucking era. I always think of these young boys, like these young, young kids. As the millennials, the millennials, right. Well, I guess it was us too. Shit's funny, man. The shit is wild as fuck, bro. That was that. <laughs> <coughs> oh wow! YouTube or Facebook don't flag us for that. We do not own the rights to the music in the background of that video. Wasn't it another one? What? Let me see. I think there might have been another one. I thought it was a dude. There right was here, right here, right here. Who is this? No, nah, the same that, person. That's no. Nah, that was the. One more, I'll see if I can find it, but if you can't, don't worry, it's not that big of a deal. Nah, I don't see it. That's just funny, man. <laughs> but <laughs> hey, did it ever say why they were canceling me? Because of his lyrics, because like the the stuff he used to say like back in the day, like the crazy Homophobic, shit, like massage, massage right? Type shit. Like, hey, man, it's a lot of cats that used to say shit like that about him and, and lyrics. Like, yo, how does he get away with saying this? And who, like. Eminem, I'm going to say this. I will say this. I enjoyed it like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? It was shock rap. Like, yo, what this nigga said? Right. But, and he was dope. His bars is dope. So, mm -hmm. it's saying that, especially when you with Dre and you got them beats, that's a match made in heaven. That's some hip-hop shit. It's in a time warp. Like, that's where, that that era, you can't take nothing away from it. Right. It's a time warp. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's that. But... But th is that that's crazy that that's the representation that Eminem is getting like that's yeah. the stand that like, no came MCs out. Want to stick up for the kid? Like where are all them lyricists at? Like they'd be like, "Yo, what?" That was some of the most cornball shit I've but ever in a seen. In nutshell, I think that's what a lot of the Gen Z cats are saying. Like they looking at him and they don't have the luster of the first white guy. They like, never and they never grew up on. They didn't grow up on Eminem. The no, Eminem that. Even, the Eminem that they got was the trash Eminem towards these last, like, five, six albums. What you know I'm what I'm saying? saying? Is, what I'm saying is they didn't grow up with the shock of a white rapper. Right, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, These yeah. kids grew up. When, they, when I moved to the West Coast, like, when I moved to Vegas, they didn't have a hip-hop station. Right. Like, when I got to Reno, Reno didn't play a, have a hip-hop radio station. They had a radio station that played top a couple hip-hop songs. It was Top 40. Right. I remember. Be men Every, in, the Men in Black and shit. Yeah, <laughs> that it was Top 40. That you would hear, like, one hip-hop song right. you like, and then hear it. Niggas from Celine Dion. It was always Spears, some Biggie Smalls some shit. and shit. Some like, California Love, maybe. And then it was just like, yeah. And then you would hear some, like, bullshit. You had mm -hmm. to go to the... That's why the CD stores was lit. But I will say this. Like, to some people, there I think it's become... And it's unfair. Uh, some artists and shit go through that. Like, Well, here's the, here's cool the fucked up. Here, like I mean, Eminem I can't even say it's fucked kids. up. But here's the part of it. Like, you can't cancel Eminem for being what he was because that's hold on that's what made him pop in that you can't cancel nobody and that's what opened the door for a lot of these other white rappers who are conscious and who you listen to look at fucking Jack Harlow and some of the bullshit he says but because he's young and he's considered Gen Z and he's that he's that you know generation so this of rap is the, this the problem I they give it. him the pass for that oh. but because Eminem was I guess like Eminem was a little more is more vulgar and more in your face, but that was then. We're talking in the nineties. Some of you motherfuckers Damn. weren't even you, you were even little kids. Like y'all wouldn't even fucking with this type shit. So for y'all to cancel somebody for so I mean y'all have been doing it. I get it. It's been happening, but hey, I, we I'm have a, to. We have to like can't pick and choose, bro. We have to because how you gonna cancel this dude? I mean, what are you going to do for canceling Eminem? Let's go there. What are you going to do if you cancel Eminem? If you make it to where Eminem can't sell another rap album or do another show. They can't do that. I'm just saying, if you somehow can stop what his progress is, 
He's already done enough. That's what I'm it don't What's even project? fucking matter. You think M is, is making records trying to and worried about where they chart? No. I think Eminem is only making records because he feels like it. Right, because he's he's stupid rich at this point. Put it this way: to book, he don't it, put nobody else to, on. It ain't uh, like he's like a music to, mogul. To like, book, he just makes music. To book Eminem is the same price to book Jay Z. They are three point three million dollars for a show. Same same price for Rihanna. Same for B. They are the highest paid Yeah, but the thing shows. Is, is when Rihanna, Jay-Z, or B comes out with a record, or it's rumored that they're coming out with a record, it's a lot of anticipation. No, 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 but what I'm saying as far as like... Even with the young cat. No, but what I'm saying is as far as like you can't stop his money. He will still get this much money. He's still worth hella hundreds of millions. I think... At this point, if you cancel him, what he's just going to retire and be like, all right, what bye. What does that mean? Look, bro, to, to young kids... <laughs> <laughs> to young kids that's really moving the needle in, in music, Eminem is already retired. Right. Like, they don't give a fuck if Eminem... Like, they're not... Eminem releases an album when the fuck he wants to, and it ain't for sales. It's because and, he wanted to release some look, music. But this, Just I'll, like I'm, you I'm said. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. This young generation is, is more... They have more heart than our generation, and I'm going to tell you why. They stand up for shit. But I think that... No, let me finish. Okay. They stand up for shit, fam. Right. They These, do. No, 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 stop. I'll give them that. I had a whole generation of, of friends that didn't look like me, loved my culture, kicked it with me. I, they, can't nobody say I ever treated them different because of the way they look, talk, or where they from. Right. But I was going to marches for Black Lives Matter before it was called Black Lives Matter. Even in Reno. My mom was the president of the NAACP in Reno. Like, nigga, I was always politically active in a city that was one of the most racist cities in the country. And I ain't never seen none of them people. So when I was watching this this <coughs> time around, and I seen them young cats, them Generation Zs, it made me feel a way because I got a lot of friends that was like, damn, it probably mean a lot more <coughs> if they were out here. They didn't even know the shit existed. So like when you see these young people that are heterosexual, but they're offended at gay slurs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because black people say it all the time. It's not good enough to not be racist, God damn it. We need you to help us in this war against racism. So when I look at this young generation, yeah, they dress funny. Yeah, they come off as sensitive, but the death rate ain't changed. Niggas are still dropping Yeah, like niggas flies. are still, yeah, that's real. The Even gen, in gen pink Z pants ain't and no... skinny jeans right. and, and nigga dressing weird to a nigga my age, they still out there in the same sickness as niggas was like when we was coming up. You still got to maneuver a certain way. So I just think perception-wise, like we'd be like, oh, they weird. They names, their rap names, and the way they name their clicks is kind of weird. Right. But it's like us with our generation. We used to like <laughs> say fuck you to the older generation. Right. And all of our flaws are really your fault. Right. Because we were the offspring of a crack generation. Right. Mm -hmm. Where one in three mothers nigga had done crack. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. So it was a different time. But well, right. now these kids, you know, like instead of us. Hey, that dude Their right kids, there, you know, that yeah, dude plays with all the girls. He's kind of uh, these kids. Um, these dudes are more inclusive. Right, that's my boy. He and did, also, my also, guy. a lot of these kids aren't in crack homes and all that shit. They got a better upbringing than a lot, a, a lot of millennials. And not a lot, but millennials. I would and say shit. it's just different because now where there's not crack, right? With they, they they grew up nigga with the hustlers, so they they yeah. expected different. Like all y'all daddies is in prison and dead. Nigga. Yeah, so yeah, because that's nigga, real. they were selling crack. That's real. Like, I, feel that. crack. I feel like, they that. I feel that. We we they, that crack did the black generation, and the black generation is the birth of hip hop. Right. So what happens to the black generation affects hip hop mm -hmm. and the culture. So all of that is connected. And when I look at some of these young cats today, it's just like, yeah, man, they're younger. They do say some shit and do some shit that's weird. But they still they do stand on they they stand shit, on their shield. A lot of that shit is our fault. Yeah, a lot of young niggas out there but, trying to get money. They wasn't showing these young niggas the way. Or but like you said, but like you said, that. they stand on their shield. Yeah, they they and fight. When, and when you talk, they really fight for what the fuck they're talking men about. Being more feminine, well, nigga, all their daddies was dead in, or in jail. Right. So what do you what do you expect from that? Right. I mean, let's let's let, we can wrap that wrap it up on this. Even if you successfully cancel Eminem, you're not doing anything to the Eminem legacy. It ain't like Harvey Weinstein. If we cancel him, there's some shit on him. There's shit on him. Like his his reputation is tarnished. You're He's only a you're only trying to cancel Eminem because of the misogynistic, homophobic 
things that he said in albums almost 30 years ago. So I get it. It's fine. You can do what you want to do. If you successfully do it, you're not really accomplishing anything. You're canceling somebody that doesn't give a fuck if he releases another album a day in his life. Doesn't care if he does another show. Because he doesn't even do tours right now. He doesn't really care if he does hey, another show. I'm going to say this, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say, like... It, so, but pivot, I get where you're pivot, coming from. Pivoting quickly from Eminem. I get where you're coming from. It's, it's perspective to it. I don't think that they're just picking on Eminem. They're consistent. These motherfuckers be coming after everybody. No, no, no. I wouldn't say they're picking that's on them. praised. I was just I'm saying. Not, so I'm not oh, 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 yeah. That's praised. Everybody that's praised on a plateau and has made. Oh, Justin Timberlake finally just had to come out and apologize For, to, to Britney Spears and, more importantly, in my opinion, to Janet Jackson. Mm -hmm. Because he's the one that pulled her breasts out to be exposed. Right. Whether it was a mistake or they both were in on it. This woman's career was completely was, fucked took a up hit. by it. She was blackballed and ostracized, yeah. and you went on to have grow greater you heights. Have great career after that. You benefited from performing <laughs> with her on that stage. Right, that was big for you. And she and she and, lost millions of dollars off that. And incident. you got to also turn around and perform at the Super Bowl afterwards. Yeah, and, and she's then, never got that. And then that. Justin comes out and with his written statement admitted to white white uh, privilege and in yeah. the industry and being able to get away with certain things and how well that's wished, exactly what that is. He had he, a great finish, career and when, how he wished he and she didn't. How he wished he would have finished up to that point. How he wished he would have finished, like or, or, or said something before. But like now, Justin Timberlake's not hot. He didn't say shit when he was hot, fam. Just like you know, you go and do the Man in the Woods album, like that's cool. But you, but do they ever? You don't want to mess with nobody that you've been messing with. You go do this album. The album's not hot, nigga. What do you do? It's the same thing that Justin do, Bieber does. Like, do Justin they Bieber ever say shit when they're hot, or do they wait till calling us niggers, and then when right. his career starts kind of fading, he goes run back to the black like people said, that got him hot again, and now do they I'm ever supposed to listen to that bullshit? That do, yum, yeah, yum yeah. Bullshit? Do they ever? Yeah. Apologize when they're hot, or do they only apologize when they need us to get them popping again? Well, not, I'm no to answer your question, but that's the right. problem. What I'm saying, they and never not, apologize not, not when about they're hot. Race. What I'm saying is like <clears throat> nobody, cancel culture everybody, right? In its nutshell, we can't say I want to get that motherfucking Thomas Jefferson uh, statue name changed, or, name, or yeah. that George Washington, because I want all those white supremacists out of my. I don't want no child of mine. Or no person in my offspring to, praise any to of have them. to live in this country and look at people that raped and murdered their ancestors. In high praise, in any type right? of high praise. And I don't give a fuck how no white person feels about it. I don't give a fuck. Right. They're, from Abe Lincoln to George Washington. I don't care. God damn Racist. It. Horrible up. men. Now, that being said, I'm consistent. Yeah. We've I'm always we've always man. been consistent on so, here. So no, so if if you go back and you decide, hey, they're saying Eminem is a rap god. This is the one I'm supposed to listen to. Okay, these kids saying that. Okay, you're saying that all the kids we listen to are trash. Yeah, and we're supposed to go listen to this so-called rap Eminem god. Eminem's supposed a, to be the rap. A, a lot of them <laughs> went back and listened and was yeah, like, there you go. And was like, you know, like now hey, we're canceling this. He nigga. can rap. We know Dre's dope. The beats are dope. Okay, cool. Yeah, he can rap. But the same shit that I was saying and motherfuckers was calling me racist for mm -hmm. are the same shit that my, niggas was saying and people, Benzino was saying, and people was saying, oh, he's a hater. He's racist. Now you got a generation of kids that went back and listened to it without any bias and was like, yo. Yeah, because they weren't raised on it or nothing. Again? Right. What, what's his subject matter? Like, what's his story? This is what the rap god is? All he talks about <laughs> is... This type of these type of things, right, right. I don't give a fuck how fly you say it. Mm -hmm. When they start listening to the lyrics, and you know these young kids are different. They got these things called lyric sheets. Yep, yeah, they can go we read every that. word. We listen to word. the shit enough to where we knew. Yeah, there's rap songs right now that if they came out with lyric sheets for, you would know that you were saying it wrong the whole time. Like, oh, that's what he was saying. The T Pain song, the uh, uh, um, I got forgot. Go ahead, bro. Well. Okay, so my, back to my point. I'm just saying like that. <laughs> my bad. I hella forgot. Yeah, you just gotta cut me off, nigga, to throw me off about oh, and forgot to shit, nigga. My whole yeah, shit. nigga, relax. <laughs> I'm that's got me over here fucking That's up, karma nigga. right there. So like. <laughs> this nigga, like, when you go back and you read those lyrics, mm -hmm. now you can't say that these, these, these generation kids are saying it because he's white. No. Because they have propped up many white rappers. Right. 
from Riff Raff to Rest in Peace, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mac Miller, Mac Miller to now the boy Jack, Jack Harlow. Harlow and nigga, there's yeah. white rappers that are successful. Oh, very and, successful. And they don't even have to. Very. And they don't even have to tie themselves to some black like legacy act. No. They don't have to be stamped by no black rapper. I want to rap. I do this. I got a fan base. I'm lit. Right. So you can't say these kids now that are going back and reading those lyrics and listening to it and saying one, oh, this dude's kind of overrated, yeah. and two, how is he a rap god and and not a misogynistic, homophobic, xenophobic, borderline racist? Because we know about the racist lyrics too. And you can see they they go and look at all that. Yeah, yeah, like, they're Wait. gonna go deeper. So the, yeah. why the fuck wouldn't the kid? <laughs> If they wasn't trying to cancel Eminem, right. they would be hypocrites. Based on everything they've done. Like, I'm not I'm not mad at them for doing what they feel like they is right to them to do. Do what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying like it's not gonna really matter. Cancel somebody where it's like gonna matter. And I get it, we're gonna you know, you pick your battles when they come along. But I feel like when do you what you're gonna do. You, you can. It doesn't matter. Explain you can. That part. Um. It just it 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 it's not gonna like. What's it gonna change? Is what I mean. Like, what's the change in it? The because thing. Eminem isn't really releasing albums right now. He doesn't really care. He doesn't really even right, do he's, tours. He's kind of releasing albums. Yeah, but he. Uh, let's let's go good. further. Let's go further. Let's just be real. Just he's not. not doing good. He's not really doing shows over the last like five years. His last tour was the Rihanna tour. That was his last like tour tour he does shows here and there right <clears throat> so it's like canceling him isn't gonna like shake the world or shake the music world you know what i'm saying it's not well, like it's just like the hip-hop generation canceling elvis and john wayne that was a big deal right because what it does is, is it says hey we're not gonna be in a system that makes us support your stardom and you be vocally racist against us. Or no, okay, let me like, uh, let me rephrase that. What I mean, why it's not going to matter, you're not in the stands. We just watched a video of a stand. He has so many stands. He's not he'll never fall off that pedestal. He'll lose the but, new but, demographic. But no, this that's why that's why it matters. What it matters is showing moving forward. Right. I'm not forward against or against. I I think how I feel about Shady is documented. Right. But for or against the reason why it matters is the same reason why i said i don't want my nephews or nieces or any of my offspring growing up in under racist institutions like and then people looking at them like they have a problem when they're uncomfortable by it when no, they don't have no trust in it no i get that like, i'm saying on so, the, on so the move. in our culture in hip-hop culture they call them a rap god you have a certain media wave that always props Eminem up in the same category as the Tupacs, the Biggies, the Nas's, the KRS-1s, et cetera, et cetera. And this young generation that is still from this hip-hop culture. Right. Like, nigga, this, my granddaddy started this shit. They third, fourth, fifth generation. They this they culture, too. Right, yeah. Just because you're young like, don't mean that you're not part of well, it. Well, I got to hold you to the same standard as all the other gods. Right. Right? And something's not right. Like, they're looking at that. I Something, just, something's not authentic I like don't something feel, don't fit me personally they're not gonna run away with the narrative no nah, me yeah but me me personally i liked every time eminem does a project the media is crazy about oh it, yeah right? i liked early eminem i thought early eminem was crazy i liked the early shit eminem he, was nuts I, I liked the shit that he rapped about i not i didn't like the like i guess he's a spaz rapper bro. right the shit he said and the way he said it, he was the, a spaz the 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 the, the, spaz, the rhyme bro. schemes and the in the, the patterns he made good songs up even head. though it was fictional they were great fictional songs but he's one of the greatest lyricists, but I don't feel like he is a rap god. I think he's. One I feel of the, like with the pen, dope as shit. I would see. I would say, but it, that doesn't mean his shit has hella context. I mean, like lyrical, yeah, see, that's why I meta, him, like all these that's metaphors why, that's where it gets crazy in, in with the like shit, the shit that like, in the shit that he can think about and write about, and 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 the crazy patterns he put together. And some of his metaphors are sick as fuck. Some of the shit that he can put together is dope. That's why I give him a. Uh, I can give him five stars lyrically. I don't mean that he's gonna put a great fucking, cause let's let's say let's say the 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 Slim Shady LP, the first album, that was a great body of work, but it's Dr. Dre, man. how was it so? Wh where was the cohesiveness in it? It didn't tell no Dr. story Dre from A it, to made, Z, and that's the thing. Dr. Dre made that further those earlier works. He made you forget about the right. fact that right. So that's what I mean. Traditionally, like traditionally, 
there's some cohesion and yeah. traditionally there's storytelling. Right. So that's what he I mean. Like about that. Now, that's, Stan, that's where it was that's at. That's why Stan was dope because Stan, Cause Stan showed did that. that Eminem has the right. ability to put a story together and, and, and have some kind of uh, content, but since, content But to since it. then, the let's look at the last song he tried to tell a story in. That Love the Way You Lie with Rihanna, the reason that song was a fucking hit was because of Rihanna. Just like his... That yeah, song, yeah, when you listen to him lyrics, like... I, I'm looking through the window. That's why they call it window pane. What the fuck kind of bar is that, nigga? It's a bar. It's a bar that he spit. But I'm just saying, like, that's oh, that's oh, like... Oh, oh, oh. But that's just it, though. God damn, bro. With, with and that's Eminem just to show you went from early, here just to... I don't bow. think so. I don't think so. Because he's never... Outside of the Stan song, which was already a widely popular song by Dido, that's her she song. Already had Dido on it. Yeah, she already no, no, had. She the, wasn't on it, she, I mean, nigga. That's I mean, her fucking yeah, song. She, already, they she wrote it. Yeah. That's her song. He put her on he the hook. He looped the hook, nigga, yep. and 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 wrote to it. Yeah. Okay, that's great. It was I, already a world hit. Song is dope. Right. Like for that. Like it's already but, a worldwide hit. But in traditional hip hop, there are certain like values that come, and there are certain things. Eminem checks some of those boxes. But one of the things that, like, I think this young generation is pretty much saying in essence, and then we'll move on really, right, mm-hmm. is, bro, you don't get to get praise, get wealth, and get fame, get status, right, and not be held accountable. They held Jay-Z accountable yeah, for every rapper real. that came after that. him that sold drugs. They, they swore, right. oh, jay Z is the reason why all these niggas are selling drugs. They try, they're trying to be like Hove. Right. When, when Jay-Z was the dopest nigga that was like, Nigga, I whole been through that. So hopefully you don't got to go through that, right. nigga. I'm telling you all these other ways to get money because I used to sell dope. And I'm telling you, the niggas that's rapping about right. it, them niggas ain't real dope dealers. Right. This is what you should be doing. Yeah. If you don't get that message, but the you big don't get difference, that message. But here's what makes Jay-Z a rap god I don't, and I don't, not... I don't, I don't, I don't, let's not go there yet. You, let me finish this point right. and then take it. it. What did Eminem bring to the game? And I'll tell you. I'm going to just be quick about he it. He opened the game for white rappers. No. I mean, the, he opened no, let me, floodgates. Out, there was, was a little trickle. Eminem introduced drug culture to rap music. Hey, you're making and, the camera shake when you do it. Let bad. me move it back a little to bit. To drug. Eminem. I'm not, I'm not doing Eminem it. Eminem literally <laughs> introduced drug culture to rap. Okay? Because outside, before Eminem came. Niggas d- wasn't doing drugs and all that. Son, his first. I remember looking at his first CD had a pill. Remember, like, the, had a pill tablet on it and shit like that. Pills, shroom, it so, pills, shrooms, all types of drugs. On that it. It was, was a just culture a drug. that wasn't in Shaheed traditional drew. black hip hop. Right. What you did on the side is what you did on your side. But like, you go back and listen. A lot of our earlier rap music was making fun of niggas. I was dope heads and shit like that. Niggas right. are talking bad about that. That wasn't the move. Right. Doing drugs and popping pills. That was something that if you're a kid from the 80s and the 90s, you grew up hearing that being called a white person thing. Like, oh, like stealing your mom's pills and that's getting that white off of them. people oh, shit. That's that white people we don't shit, do bro. pills. We don't we do didn't. shit like that. We did it. So, Y'all now do you, now. We did not then. My bad. Go ahead. Now, now you fast forward. To mm-hmm. a younger generation that has always had Eminem in the forefront, yeah. has always had those type of shock lyrics. Like, there's nothing wrong with saying Eminem negatively affected the culture in that way, because Snoop negatively negatively affected the culture in the way that men rap about women. Right, bitches true. ain't shit but holes and tricks. I remember when that came out, my aunties and them was wilding like, "What the fuck this nigga say?" Like, turn that shit off. <laughs> my mother and them wasn't rocking with wasn't that shit. None that wasn't of that normal shit. to just jump on a record, nigga, and the first thing you say, man, bitches ain't shit but holes and tricks. What? Lick on like the that was that was suck the dick. Like, come on, bro. Like <laughs> we, <laughs> doggy style. Like niggas. Was like yo, I guess these bitches is bitches. Nigga. If we any, gotta talk to any them one like of that. your parents ever, you would be when you would listen to the song. You knew it was coming up. You look so, out the corner of your eye just to see how. To your all the people that hear my voice, like I'm not picking. I don't want to make it sound like we're picking on Eminem or I'm taking any side. I'm just saying that like sometimes. If Jay Z is responsible for for niggas trying to be drug dealers and, and get money, then Eminem's responsible. And, and for Snoop is responsible for culture. motherfuckers calling all these bitches, all these bitches as hoes and this and this and that. Mm. Like if Luke is responsible for putting women in the video and making them shake their ass and gyrate and right. damn near nothing, right? Well, M, yeah, like because M didn't make up metaphors, bar, bars, and, and, and assemblies. No, he, he didn't, didn't do that. He's not the first rapper to rap like him. So what did Eminem bring? Eminem brung. Drug culture, homophobia, mm-hmm. xenophobia, drug culture, violence, and I'm never gonna. I'm forget, always violent. I'm but... never gonna forget. 
I, he didn't bring violence. I'm never going to forget the, 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 the racism shit. Mm-hmm. So all that is in there, and they're saying, like, wait, if we're supposed to be this, this, and that, like, how the hell are we sitting Bill Cosby in jail because he's a criminal? But right, I'm, yeah. I'm not comparing Eminem to Bill Cosby and R. Kelly because they're not our Weinstein because he's not but a criminal. But Eminem had songs about drugging females and shit, so I see but why they're I, trying I get to that cancel Because the they was on Rick Ross' yeah. ass for a minute when that yeah. nigga said, drop the molly in yeah. a drink and she ain't even know. Like, yeah. hold on, fam. Yeah. That's a little they rapey. Was on, they got on That's him a quick, little rapey. Like, whoa. That's rapey. That's rapey. <laughs> you do not try to make it cool for these niggas to start putting shit. Because I got sisters, fam. Like I, I got God, women in my family. I'll be goddamn. You drop we, something in her drink and she don't know, nigga. We and I find air, out. We gonna air your shit out. Yeah, noodles. <laughs> like that's noodles, nigga. Like that's that's not cool. Okay, so here's the thing. The difference, but the, here's what does not make Eminem a rap god, and he shouldn't be in all the conversations with Hulk. Because here's what he has. Here's what in he, your opinion, here's what he doesn't have in common with these four. What he doesn't have in common with Jay Z, Nas, Big, and Tupac is storytelling. Every one of those four artists can tell a hell of a story, and they got albums doing this shit. You well, feel what I'm e- saying? Eminem's never had the streets. In so, fairness, like, because without Eminem, no, but you couldn't I'm, be no Drake. Right, but here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Kendrick. Is we can't, have, well, but we I can't. Here's, what, here's why they can't be in, he can't be a rap god. None of his albums have the, like, every time any one of those four artists dropped an album, from start to finish, that story was told, and it was told well, and it wasn't just one song telling the story; it was many songs telling the you mean story. Through the album, right? Yeah, the cohesion of the yeah, album. through yeah. the cohesion of the album. That's what made it hard for me to like really so, get into them albums. Is because so that's it, it why does that's why like that's why yeah. I can't put him in that conversation with them. Well, this is the thing. Part of it to me is that Eminem is a really a vulgar backpack rapper. That has achieved pop star like icon. Yeah, that's status. real shit. That, yeah, so because that's of real. That, that's why he don't fit in that category to me because Rep. no backpack yep. rapper has ever been considered the goat. No backpack rapper has ever been considered the goat. The reason why is because only us raw hip hop ears can even, even know make about out your the fucking met- rapper. We even know, right. no, not know what you're them. saying. We, we know we what you're only, saying. Man, yeah. if you put on, <laughs> if you put the shit that niggas listen to in, in backpack rap in the club in the battles. On on regular TV, oh my dog, God. people can't hear that shit. They don't know. That's why Jay is, is is a lot of people call Jay and Big and people like that Nas because they come from that, but was able to like evolve their sound right. to a place where the mom in the grocery store that ain't gonna ever buy the album can be. Like, it's a hard knock. Like, exactly uh-huh. right. Like I heard my mom hum, humming a big pimping one day, nigga. She ain't know what the fuck <laughs> he was talking about. She did mm-hmm. She know the song. Right. Yeah, because like, it's the guy. It's some America. To it, America you know what ultimately saying? is pop. Right. The greatest rock stars aren't just the guys that only rock. Rock heads know. Right. There's somebody that I can name. Like, you know what yeah, I'm saying? I don't exactly. listen to rock and roll. Like, I, if I know you and you're a country musician, right. you popping. Okay, so you don't know rock and roll, but you know who Corn is. Exactly. Because you know how big they are. Like, in the, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, we all saw TRL. It was, nigga, it was Corn, Backstreet Boys, like right. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know that. You know what I'm saying? But the average hip hop fan ain't. Ain't they burst to they it. never heard of the grave diggers and shit like right. that. Like, nigga, what are you? What? Beat nigga? nuts. Yeah, bro, what are you talking about? Who? <laughs> Who they work with? Who is the like, beat you know nuts? I mean? Yeah. Like, they might, they'll, have, they'll have us, let them put out an album with like an Eminem. Oh, that's the group that Eminem worked with. Like, bro, no, fam, look, Eminem and the beat nuts worked shout out together. To the girls, man. I remember I was with the girls one day. We had the store, man, going mm-hmm. to get groceries. It's a magazine. I was like, look at my boy Hove. Lil Faith walked up to me. She's like, oh, that's Beyonce's husband. Nigga, like, you know me, dog. <laughs> Fucks me up, man. I'm like, that's Nick, girl, what? Do you know who that is? You don't know who that is? Like, you know hold on, that, that ain't. No, hold on. You saying, like, Beyonce got the money. No, 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 no. Beyonce's his wife. <laughs> yeah. Like, and Beyonce do got bread, but it's just. No, nah, I'm I just know, saying, like, like, you know what I'm saying. To anybody else, B, to, to the, us, B got dodo. Yeah, to us, we like, yo, that's ho- like, that's B. That's ho- hoes, right? right. Like, that, it, it that's hoes' wife, nigga. It was just funny because it showed me generational. Perspective, right? Like my young cousins and shit like that, they love Hov, they respect who he is, but they also be like, nigga Drake, that dude, yeah, nigga Kendrick, that dude, right? Jay but Cole, that but dude. Kendrick and J Cole are Jake, you know what I mean? They get they that, they it. get that top five they conversation. Be, they be on that because like, they you know all their albums are dope too. But uh, to wrap, we're just gonna wrap it up on that one. But that took us a little long. It's 
It is what it is. Like he said, everybody's got to be held accountable no matter when you made the comments, no matter how long ago they were. If Bill Cosby's going to jail for shit he did back in the 70s, Harvey Weinstein shit he's done over the years, then yeah, you got to hold Eminem accountable for shit. Because he's not any different. He's never backtracked. He's never apologized. So yeah, you can... Do what you got to do. And yeah, apologize like, for the other shit. Dude. Right. Like, at least that's consistent. Yeah, See, like, that's real. I'm, I'm Never went back on any person. of that shit. I'm a certain type of black person. Mm-hmm. I was raised a certain type of thing, man. God body. Okay? That being said, I can let certain shit. I get it. I move on. I'm not holding shit over niggas' head. But at the same time, if you jump out and it was like, oh, I'm sorry for all the homophobic slurs, and you give them a long, lengthy of sincere apology, I'm going to be wondering, like, where's the where's the one the black women, fam? Right. And black people. Right. For the shit you said. Because we probably wouldn't get it. We never got it. You don't get to mention it in a fucking song on your album and think you apologize to my mom. Right. For disrespecting her and her culture. Like, so it is what it is. We we off that. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Eminem. Shout out to uh, Gen shout Z. Shout out to Gen Z shout for out to always that just found out that they speaking was a their shit. You know what I'm Right. You know what I mean? Who knew? <laughs> What's up? What we got? Next one, entertainment man. You said you was uh, you had a story to tell about the Wack One Hundred and uh, K. Oh, Wack One Hundred and K. Deuce are beefing over a uh, what's the that app where everybody's in there? You can raise your hand and shit. Oh, clubhouse. Clubhouse thing where they said that when Wack started talking, the nigga K. Deuce muted him and shit. So the nigga Wack calling him all type of bitch ass niggas said it's on. You can either pull up, we can fade, or it's on site. When I see you, I'm gonna knock you out. All types of shit, cause you muted me. And <sighs> nigga K Do said, bro, I didn't mute you. We muted everybody, cause too many people was trying to raise their hand and shit. I'm just saying, like it seemed like Wack every that time we big. on here. Yeah, it seemed like here's my pro. Here's why I brought it up. It wasn't because the beef was hella big. No, no, I'm just saying that it should have been yeah. beef. Well, Wack does. Wack wants to fight him over. He said he muted him in the classroom. You feel me? In the clubhouse app. In the clubhouse classroom. Yeah, in the clubhouse app. Um, it seems like ever since we started back, we've had a Wack One Hundred story. Yeah, I'm starting to think. I don't know if that's us, nigga, or him, because this nigga is that consistent. No, I'm not saying it's like, us. I'm no, saying no, it's I'm him. I'm not saying either. I'm just making talking shit like. Like, uh, man, we was just talking about this cat. We talked about Wack, last man, episode, the episode the before. The day, it goes back to everything we said. It's just like, man, Wack, I feel like you're in a position where you winning. You're doing good. Like, you're, you're relevant. You have relevancy. I don't think you really can go out there in the hip-hop world and, like, really <coughs> move and shake and get money without crossing paths with Wack or somebody that he's in business with. Right. Um. So with that being said, I mean, at least that's how it seems from out here. I don't want to speak for L.A. I ain't, I'm not an L.A. nigga. Like, I just, that's what it seems like. Um. Why? Yeah, hey, but this Clubhouse shit, man, is crazy because Clubhouse shows just, like, our marketing power. Mm-hmm. And Clubhouse was on his, on his way out. They weren't successful, and they was like, hey, let's tap into the <coughs> black urban hip-hop demographic. Yeah. Let's pay a couple rappers a couple bags to come on here and talk their shit. And talk about the business, and, and I hope guess we. What get, I hope we get a bag to be on there one day. Now they're evaluated at over a billion dollars. Should we not? I, I we not taking no deals, man. Unless not with no startup companies, unless we get equity. We've already been on a deal with a startup company. We know how that works. No, I'm not talking about like a deal with them. I just want to be able to come on there one time. Pay like if we're big, like pay us to get on there. No, nah. somebody sent me an invite to it. I just never, I haven't accepted it yet. <laughs> but I'm that's the only reason I brought that up. It just seems like Wack One Hundred just he stay in the hip hop section of the news all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, is it what? Like, it, okay, here's here's where I respect it. It's always the same energy with everybody. Is it though? No, that's a lie because it's not. Because we were just talking about that. Yeah, it's not the same energy saying, like, with everybody. That's real. What I pointed out the other day is that. He told Meek, I don't care if you got the prison reform initiative. I don't care if you got millions of dollars and everything. You worked your ass off to sacrifice. If oh, yeah, about, run up If and you're about this up. street shit, yeah, run up all on the way. Because he said, if you bang this shit like I bang, like I bang these Pyru politics, this gang right. shit, you're supposed to run up on this snitch nigga, beat him up, nigga, and deal with the consequences. Whatever happened, happened. If he with cops, nigga, whatever. And then that's what gangsters do, right? 
So that was that was the spot. And, and a lot of gangsters go to jail on stupid shit like and ironically, that. Ironically, ironically, right? You go, and just a couple of weeks later, you make a, a jest to my son, the general. Right. My son responds in a way that you don't feel is uber respectful, right? And he yeah. He's on some clown shit. Yeah. You. You you shot another jab out and that nigga offered you nigga a five the fade, fade and now we ain't and hear I none heard since. Them niggas talk about anything. Since. Now we're on to you beefing with. I guarantee K-Dudes you a phone now. call would happen nigga after that we like oh call that nigga it's not even like that blah, blah, blah. okay then so now we talking about a nigga that I ain't never even heard of before named yeah. K Deuce who's K Deuce but that yeah that's the other thing too like nigga who is K Deuce. We ain't heard of him. I'm sure he's I big somewhere. Nah, I just like my whole thing about this subject. Just I don't know him, don't mean that he ain't shit. He like I said, he shit. might be huge somewhere, but my Shout own, out to the whole reason I brought the whole shit up was because, like I said, it seems like the last three weeks, every episode we've had, or the last two weeks, every episode, we've had something to say about this nigga Whack. Well, that means we need to talk, stop talking about Whack unless it still comes out. <laughs> To him doing a project or some business, <laughs> but like you said, Shout he's got to have something coming out with all this shit he got going, all this beef and shit he's trying to start. I know. Um, what we got next on there, baby? Yeah, I know. You just supposed to say, get into your next call. Your topic was uh, what happened with him? Oh yeah, the video. Oh, uh, so you know, last episode we what touched the on episode? the little incident that the baby had uh, about a uh, house that he had rented. And shot a music video in and got into a tussle with the owner and the owner suing him and shit like that for a stolen cell phone and a whole bunch of assault and all that shit. So a video has surfaced and it shows one of the baby's associates in a tussle with said homeowner. Now, the way my partner here has seen it is that homeowner had hands on the associate first and got himself drugged. Do yours. The way yeah, I saw way. it was just the nigga got drugged. Okay. That you know sense. what I'm saying? So I didn't know that. That makes sense. And that's the thing, bro. Are perception, you perception, bro. Perce- I, like you, I know what you can say. It's like it all, it's all perception. But now we have some type of video evidence of the alleged assault. Now, how who's gonna take it? How, like I said, me and you were sitting in the room, and we take it. We took it two totally different ways. How is the court now gonna take this shit? See, that's where it gets. Yeah, it gets tricky. When I've seen the video from the start, like when it starts, when he goes, that's why I watched it so many times. You see, to my eye, you see the homeowner, right? Like. I don't know if he pushed him, like, or grabbed him. It looked like he put his hands on dude. And then dude grabs him because he didn't just push him. He grabbed him and, like, walked him down. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? And then put him on the ground. And then you could t- and then they all ran and came and grabbed their boy. And then they grabbed him. But then also, context. <coughs> when you listen to the background, the narration, the narration is... Oh, we got him on tape. He done fucked up. Yup, we got him. He fucked up. I got all that shit. So when I hear that, I'm just like, okay, well, they wouldn't be saying that about somebody in their entourage. But here's my... Th- okay, and go then, ahead. I'm thinking to myself, like, also, you would have to be highly intelligent and criminal to, like, to think while your friend's assaulting someone to pull out the camera and speak the narrative as if he's not... The one that's that's the guilty party. So that's why I was just like, I don't know how that's going to work out. Because I don't know how many people is going to see what I seen. But here's my thing. is like, if we got it all on camera, that means everybody's camera's out, right? Why do we only have uh, this? It don't mean that, though. But I, I doubt that they're talking about the one girl had her camera out, bro. I'm, I'm, from that I'm sure narration, than, sure what I got angles. from it, there's more angles. So, why do we only have one video of it? Is that the only video that makes it look like it's in the baby's favor? I'm being devil's advocate right now. But who is every if everybody other it have to be her? Oh, she was with him. Yes. Okay. So now, what if the baby's whole side shows a different narrative? It I didn't shows hear her or it. She didn't. You just hear her talk at the end. Yeah. Um. 
So she got paid. She pretty much put the video out. That's what I'm getting from it now. We're talking about it. Um, but here's my thing. It's like if everybody had – not everybody. If four or five people had an angle on it, why is there not more than one video trying to clear the baby's name? Well, because now it's in legality, and, and the baby has – million dollar attorneys that are letting them know like if, especially whether they have the video or not right if that girl is a part of the situation i don't know if she was with the homeowner or she was just a third party at the, at the i party. think she was just a third party female so at the event she probably got a bag out of it like yo right that's she this. sold the she video probably hit up whoever it was was like oh, i got this i got a video of this shit and they right. seen it and it definitely looks aggressive on on the part of the baby's crew yeah, yeah man, we running with that shit here go this twenty thousand. she done nigga like oh, so my point is why is the baby's defense team not trying to nip that in the bud if they have a video showing Cause otherwise? Because a good lawyer knows you don't try your, your, your case in the public. You try it in the court of law. Even because, this day and age, even though? Even this day and age. There's an element to public perception. Right. But you don't know what they holding. Right. If they holding the tape that shows him with the initial assault. Yeah. All the other that other tape don't mean shit. Right. That's just and you already played your hand. That's just the other side already played other their tape hand. Other tape ain't even going. To have, don't even got to come to court. Right. Board. Right. Yeah, because you, you don't get to assault somebody and then be protected in self defense, nigga. When they get to whooping your ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's the conversation we had about the gray area. Of that's last why George. Week. Zimmer, that's why George Zimmerman is is America's biggest bitch because he went and attacked a seventeen year old and, and started getting his, his ass, ass beat whipped. and shot him in his heart. <laughs> And went and pulled his gun out and shot him in his heart instead of taking that ass whooping that the police told him was not over to engage there taking in. Taking that L. I digress. But you know, I just wanted to update the people on what we have on that the baby shit since we had talked about it last week and touched on it. We'll keep you updated. You know, see what see what progresses through that. I mean, we could have shown on that video too. I don't know what the copyright is because that's on somebody else's yeah, webpage. That's right. Don't forget to like, follow, and share the stream for ATS Show. Always talking shit in the motherfucking building. All right, man, let's take this up a notch, bro. I'm going to take this up a notch. To, just out of a, out to another round. Not take it up a notch. I don't want to sound disrespectful. We're just like we that. changing the sports arena. We're getting out of the... Yeah, we're getting out of this... Um, Hip-hop. Texas. <laughs> oh, Texas. Fuck are y'all doing? Texas, what the fuck, man? That's what I got written on the board. Texas. What... The fuck. Like, what is going on in Texas, my G? Like, y'all already didn't come through and, and, and seal the election for us. Now, there's too many progressive black people and Latino people and white people in the state of Texas for Texas to be a Republican. The Texas stronghold. senators already showed that they ain't shit. You see what you're mayors ain't The mayors ain't shit. Like... Like, the fact that they said, fuck this, we're opening up 100%, no mask mandate, everything back to normal. I'm so glad I'm getting my dad out of there that, next week, bro. That governor <coughs> is either the smartest man in the country. Or the dumbest fucking idiot ever in the world. Fuck the country. So what is going on, man? Like, why? I, I don't understand. I don't understand, like, what Texans are doing about this Why shit. are we putting millions, and pe millions of people at risk? Like... What do y'all know that we don't know? Have y'all found the cure that air, nobody in Texas has the shit no more and y'all ain't shared it with if nobody? Because I, I, I'm just wondering how the fuck you feel like you guys are fucking cured enough to where you can have a hundred percent. If I, I'm going to tell you right now, if I lived in Texas, I'd be moving out of Texas. Right. I'd be making plans like we got to go somewhere else. I'm not finna live somewhere where I'm in fucking danger now because it is okay for these motherfuckers to come in coughing and breathing on every fucking thing with no mask on. You guys heard me talking about it. I'm going to get my dad next fucking Friday out of Texas. And I'm so much more happy now knowing what the fuck is going on out there. Oh, please. This shit don't make no fucking sense, dog. Like, I don't... People from Texas, we live in Vegas and we know that it's a tourist place. Please see it. stay your stupid asses there and don't come here. We don't need none of that because you're going to come here and you're going to be fucking arguing with everybody because where the fuck you're at, you don't got to wear a fucking mask. We still wear masks here, nigga. Period. And I'm the type, I, we don't advocate violence, but I'm still the type of motherfucker I catch you without a mask, probably going to smack you in the back of your motherfucking head. Hard. The shit ain't over. The shit ain't gone. Just cause, motherfuckers think because it's 2021 that COVID's over with. 
Everybody's out there. I can't wait for 2021, man. We're going to get past all this shit. COVID's not gone, nigga, just because the year changed. All that happened was the year changed. Ain't nothing changed. People are still dying daily from this shit. Y'all keep treating it like it's a fucking common cold. This ain't no common cold, bruh. This ain't this shit ain't common. It ain't good. And they're talking about there's a new fucking stronger strain of it coming. Like, and you got these stupid motherfuckers in Texas saying it's cool. You can walk around without your mask, and it's and it's illegal to go into some places with a mask now. Fuck you, Texas. Period. Y'all motherfuckers from the governor from the senators down are fucking dumbasses. I'm just saying, man, like. Misinformation, privilege, uh, those are going to be the downfalls of this country. Um, the idea of the sinister, the sinister idea that like a certain sector of people are more important, they yield more power, and what they decide, um, everyone else should follow and have to follow. I think that, you know, at one, on one hand, we can argue. You know, and, and yell about it, but this is this falls on the people. It this really falls does. on people that find time to watch every reality show, every game, know every stat of their favorite player, um, know what Jordan is com- mad because James Harden what, got traded. Knows what Jordan are coming <laughs> uh, and when they're coming. Right. You know, all these remedial <clears throat> things, things that ha- that add nothingness. To nothing. Add no like, value to your life in any but, way, shape, or form. But you but find vanity. time to have fun and make fun at people that try to get you to go and be an adult and, and be a functioning member of society and take your punk ass down and, and study and educate yourself on who represents your children's best interests moving forward and vote for them. Cause the or crazy, don't, or don't vote for them. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Um, it's just one of those things that like, you can, we can point the finger at every element that's negative in society, but at the end of the day, go vote. Yeah, it comes down like, to us and go what vote. we do. If you don't go vote, if you don't go let your voice be heard, go ahead and listen to the rhetoric of people that tell you not to vote, your vote don't count. Like, what has that got you? What does that got you? Um, go go go! Be educated about your, your your cities. Don't tell me anything about the Roman fucking empire. Don't go watch Game of Thrones and, yeah. be, and be infatuated <laughs> with historic things. And you're right here in the present of a historic moment. And you don't. And vote. you tell. And, and you're just chilling. You you're playing video up. games. You're smoking with your homie. You know. You're doing shit. You're on a podcast talking shit. Every day, because what not, he's saying, but you don't go out and make yourself a fully functioning member <laughs> of society. What he's How do saying? you do that? You pay your taxes, you raise your family, you abide by laws, and you vote. And you vote. Why do Why do all of them but one? The, the cra- one that actually yields you something in right. return. The crazy shit is. Come on, fam. The video games, the smoking weed, the podcast between the two of us is something that happens. Right here. What the fuck you mean? And do you know what we did when it came time to vote? You go vote. We got the fuck up and we went and fucking voted. I, he don't play video games. So I play video games. I put the video game down and I went and voted. I mean, I don't play video <laughs> games, but I do other shit. Right. I, I do other shit. You put the blunt down. Like, I put the blunt down. <laughs> and I put went the, and voted. Nigga, I stopped writing. <laughs> nigga, I, right. I, I put my book down. Nigga, I, I don't, I, I, I turned the, 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 the documentary on pause. Right. And I went like, let me go and handle you this. Voted. And you know me, it's a family tradition. Me and my mother, I always go work the election with her. Well, yeah, he so, worked the shit. Trust me, fam. Like, I'm telling you, every and, day I would come back and be like, man, it it would be cats that ain't voted for 40, 50 years, and then when they vote, they'd be like, damn, that's all it took. That's, that's all, all it, it took. And you feel empowered because that is your say. When these senators go and vote on shit and you're yelling at the TVs, yeah, vote for it. We want it. That's not your say. You didn't vote the nigga your in office to, to vote, vote for what for you wanted. Is to go and find the person that you're going to vote for that's that, gonna do that what is going to vote ask. for what you want and what that your ideals line up, right? right? So then when they get in there, and they start acting funny, and they don't vote. You can do what the what the great Senator Bernie Sanders just did, and you force a vote. Like, no, 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 no. This is what we ran on. You hold your case. 
excuse me, you hold everybody accountable and say, no, this is what the people ask for. Right. Overwhelmingly. Do you understand that 60% of the people, 60% of Republicans that don't even believe Joe Biden to be the legitimate president <laughs> are vote, are in favor of this bill? Are you know, What are you talking $15 an hour? Yeah. So when you get a few Republicans and one Democrat that's like, no, let's try to do 11 or let's maybe wait another year or two. The, the other people, because people would have voted for them, these young people that went out and voted for the AOCs of the world and the Bernie Sanders of the world, yeah, now they you got voted for somebody bad. that they understand yeah. that has a spine and that's going to be like, no, the people that sent us here this agreed is what on they 15 want. an hour. Right. We told them we was running on 15 an hour. And there's no We're coming back from that. We're not voting for anything other than 15 an hour. Or more. Or more. It ain't getting any less than 15. So, 15 an hour is the floor. So now, and this is another thing. This is what didn't happen 20 years ago. Because of these young progressive Democrats are in office, and some of the older ones are already starting their good old boy net, uh, network uh, tendencies, and they're starting, to, oh, well, maybe we can negotiate in the name of bipartisan. They're like, no, 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 no. For four years, for uh, actually for 12 years, we didn't have bipartisanship. Cause and since, now that's what y'all Because since want? Obama's been in office right. and left, they didn't work for him at right. all. And these young people. And that's what you want. You want bipartisan. So what is nigga, AOC fuck and them you. Are talking about doing? They're saying right now that, okay, well, if you don't vote for the bill and well, force the 15 vote. an hour, we're going to force the vote. And if that don't work, we're going to start fining every every corporation and every employer in this country that can't that, that don't pay that can't an hour. that can't that said they, they can't afford it because what you ain't going to be able to afford is them fines and sanctions. What you ain't going to be able to afford? Okay, <laughs> but this is the other thing. That, this is something that people need to pay attention to. That the common person should pay attention to. You you can't what you can't afford is to lose some of those government subsidies either. No. So that's the thing. That's what Obama was talking about with the outsourcing. That's why a lot yeah. of those people brought their jobs back because it was like, okay, well, we're not going to protect you over there. Though. Not at all. So if they come, so if you want to go be an American up. business in Turkey, nigga, okay, you buy but, Turkey but, law. But, but but yeah, but you're not protected. <laughs> you're we're going to let Turkey it be known law, that nigga. you're out there on your own. Like we don't care what they do to you. And we like, don't let they, the sharks come yeah, get your ass, luck. nigga. Since you want to go work over there right. instead of employing Americans. In which you get millions of dollars in tax subsidies for employing, and they brought their ass. A lot of right jobs back. came back to America, right. so it's just it's about holding them accountable. There's multiple ways to hold people accountable. But Let's as think far about as Texas goes. Fuck Texas, Mike. Well, fuck you. As far as Texas goes, specifically, Georgia came through. Yeah, it was a time that Nevada came through for Obama. It yeah. had always been Republican that we pushed it through. They've been holding down, holding this down new blue the last movement. two, the uh, last four is, elections. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give it back to you. The bottom line is, is that whether you're Democrat or Republican, if you look at the polling numbers, most of us agree on the same things, and overwhelmingly, we all agree that you shouldn't go broke because you get sick. Yeah, you shouldn't go broke. Because you to have a baby to bear, to to go to try to go college, and you shouldn't go broke because you tried to own a home and oh. they changed the market on you. Oh yeah, these hey, those yeah. three things those three things are the things that most Americans fall into uh, poverty over, right? So foreclosure, student debt, if, and, and, and healthcare, healthcare. And so, and if you can't eradicate those, and that's one thing that Obama put in the Affordable Care Act of 2010. Go look it up. These entities got paid over trillions of trillions of dollars to eradicate these things when 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 your boy trump got in there they kind of pushed that shit through and got rid of a lot of those oversights and stuff like that so things are a little rocky now it's time for americans you don't have to be democrat or republican but you just need to educate yourself on american just be issues just be human fuck fuck democrat or republican be fucking human be educated. Be an be educated, an educated human. human. Be like, educated that's, about what's going like, on and vote accordingly. City government matters. You need to know who's going to be the all, mayor. Fuck that. All you know, you know, parts you need to know of who's government going to be your matters. Every from top to floor matters in this government. If you want shit to change, you change it from the, the outside in, and that's from top everybody, to floor. Everybody that's having an issue with Dieter, understand this is a voting issue. Yeah, get rid of it. Uh, they've changed heads because in twice other now. Places, like, I just read an article, and I, I'm not going to name the sor- or source it because I, I don't remember, but, like, I just read an article where they're saying, you all can go out there and look it up. California is making, has made so much money that there there's a clause that if they reach a, a certain amount of, uh, a higher percentage of, of their budget, 
uh, or, or was it their, uh, their, their, their gross or whatever it is. Excuse me for fucking up the story, but make a long story short. They made so much money that they're going to have to start sending checks out to American tax, to the taxpayers in their, in their state. So Californians are possibly about to get pay get a paycheck for just being a Californian. And California's not a perfect state. And they're not as but they it, make they're it's a wealthy They used to state. say they were in hella it's, debt it's too to be out of debt now. They makes figured it a out. A lot of money. And I want everybody that hears that, go look that up because you'll you'll get a better understanding than what I just butchered. But yeah, I was just reading, I thought that was funny. And, and one of the things I look at Cali is like, man, they're a neighboring state. They're not having the problems that that we're having. Their their economy was is is is, is going was going up because they didn't stalemate everybody's money. Like, yeah, they shut you down and you had to go home, right. but everybody was getting paid accordingly. Yeah, they no. You know what's crazy? They had hell of fraud because they just decided to pay everybody, and we'll we'll figure it out in the end. Like yeah, when the tail end of this, checks and balances we'll figure all this. And if you stole money or you took money, you what, <coughs> lied about something and got more. But you, you had you nothing know, in place. When we looked it up. The fine is only like three hundred something. They had nothing in place in Nevada for this. And they're like, fuck it, we're stopping everybody's money till we figure out who's fraud. Not pay everybody, we'll figure it out in the end. Like, That's we should have did it. Well, here's my fuck Cali up. Here's didn't have up. nothing in place either. Here. But they put competent leaders right. in positions to where they could figure it out. Like, hey, it's better to pay everybody so nobody's left behind. And people can still uh, further the, the economy, economic, stimulate the, ec- the ec- economy, what? Via internet or via drive. Like, okay, I'm going to order my food for takeout, right? <laughs> I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that, right? So they were still money, monies were still being made. Businesses were still able to come drop food off to your house, right? Right? They were st- all that was still being able to go on, mm. and people were able to like participate in that because the government was giving them money. Well, here's the crazy shit. I when you hold everybody up three, four months, think about think about if fifteen dollars an hour started in the year two thousand, right? When it should have, when the economy was doing shitty after nine eleven and all this shit. You could have. This is where I now agree with you with saving the housing market. If everybody was a even minimum wage, because even predatory laying, th- lending then at fifteen dollars an hour, you could afford your house. You wouldn't have ended up upside down. You feel me? If everybody across the board got fifteen dollars an hour at the at, fuck it, what we'll the year two thousand eight? If everybody at that point was getting fifteen dollars an hour, right? Housing economy would have been fine because people would have been able to afford their houses. It wouldn't have been predatory lending. There's no way you could have did it because. People would have been able with the fifteen dollars an hour, two people in the house, even at a minimum wage job, if they're making fifteen dollars an hour, thirty that's thirty dollars an hour. You can afford to live off that. Imagine what we would be at if fifteen dollars an hour happened in two thousand eight. We would be at like probably twenty, twenty five dollars an hour. If we have progressive thinkers from then progressively upping this along as it should have been, because our cost of living has gotten no lower no, no, right. over the years. Rises in but our aspect. motherfucking un, our our federal minimum wage has got no higher with it. It's they're not and, moving equal at all. A, one's here and one's still trying to even move from right here just to get right here. Fam, and and like I said earlier, there's no guarantee, and we're losing jobs. And let's and we're a country of immigrants, so we're always adding people to our society. And we have illegal immigration of from all races. Right. From all it's not a Mexican thing. From all races we have illegal immigration. And they're adding to society. So you got all these people coming here, right? You have people being born every day. The minimum wage ain't going up. Cost of living in every aspect it's is going shooting skyrocketing up. every and, fucking and, year. And you're subtracting jobs. We lived in a place let let's let me tell you this. Reno, when he lived there. What was your apartment going for? Your studio in re, in uh what was it Regency? What was it going for? I think I was paying like six, seven. That apartment now six, is twelve to fourteen hundred dollars. They had some twelve hundred joints in there though when I was there. I remember. I oh, and those are probably like twenty four hundred. Yeah, I just had a studio. three thousand oh, dollars. I know now. the loft that they had because they had a beautiful loft. Oh in yeah, there, that shit that is. Probably, it, it's worth it though. That's just probably going for like. So. Something. He moved. Well, almost ten years ago. Yeah. Minimum wage has not has been eight seventy five in Reno in Nevada. Period. Even before he moved, mm-hmm. how the fuck 
Are you going to afford that apartment? Say you have lived there. Say you're like a tenant who just, that's where you want to be. You don't want to move anywhere. I'd have to move. He couldn't afford it. He would have had to move somewhere fucked up. Studio or, apartment somewhere. I wouldn't have been able to afford it on paper. Right. Yeah. And that's where the great niggas, American niggas rat race happened. Because to do illegal shit. Because you got every American that's, that's in that category. Not necessarily has to Or a nigga would have been shit. working two, three jobs. Yeah, I'd have been working two jobs. But breaking his fucking no back whip. every fucking day. Get rid of the whip. No fucking car. <laughs> he got groceries. He might, he, might, he, he, he might have a couple Let's outfits, some cool Let's shoes. Now you got now your eating habits <laughs> got to be different. You can't you know even go out like and splurt. Yeah, you yeah, can't so go now, eat now nice. I can't do that. Like can't you eat ain't clean. eating steaks at home. Can't eat and clean. Yeah, no, you can't no eat clean at all. And and like you said, now my social life is took a hit, right? I can't take nobody out on a date. Yeah, it's over with. It, right? But like, but we're supposed to, and we're and, and that's our American dream. That's the American dream. That's our American dream. That's what the fuck we have to look forward to every time we fucking wake up in the morning. What kind of shit is that? America is not the land of the great, the home of the free. America has never been great. There's no way we can make it great again because there's no point in time where this country was great. So my thing is, is that this shit's fucked up, been fucked up, and I feel like oh. it might get all right if we start voting the right people in place. I've been, look, but if we don't do that, <coughs> motherfuckers might really want to start thinking about moving out of the country. I think, America's, I think America is in in its own way. I think it is a great country. I think that I think it has the potential. I think the idea that because something is great or has potential to be great, that it should remain stagnant is ludicrous. So if it, if America had ideals of being great and calls itself home of the free, right? Every day as Americans, we should be consistently working on making sure everyone is enjoying the epitome of freedom. Yeah, we should feel free. I don't feel free. Now, and I'm not talking about oppression as a black person. I'm not talking about anything racial. I don't feel free financially because I kind I mean being in my business owner shit I do because I'm my own boss but let's talk pre image box pre this was the company I didn't feel comfortable every day waking up I didn't feel no freedom I had to wake up get dressed in the fucking suit or in my outfit in my fucking uniform whatever it was and had to clock in and clock out of a job that's not freedom that's slavery and this is not, uh, I'm no, not no, saying no, this no, is no, racial no, slavery. That's not slavery, though. No, 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 no. I'm saying it, it's slavery yeah, to yeah. me because I'm working we for it. I'm, I'm, like. no, here's why it's slavery to me. I'm working for a fucked up wage, making somebody else's dream and fucking company flourish. Because I wasn't, I'm not talking about working for a Fortune 500 like chain. It's working, period. I right. Can. I'm working for somebody else's dream. I can't leave none of this to my kids when I'm gone. None of this. Maybe this little ass pension, if they even offer a good 401k. Most pl- some places don't. That's what I mean by it's slavery to me. Because, nigga, what did you get as a slave? No wage. Little to no wage, if anything. You got scraps yeah, of food and but shit. No, no, no. But you was, you're not getting raped by your employer because but this they're is horny. not. This is this is this is how I I don't use it loosely. That is not loosely to me. Maybe it is to you. I look at it well, as modern if you're day. It to, okay, now if you say modern, my, I look at it as modern day slavery. That puts it in perspective. I do not want to slave my ass off modernly for another person's dream, for another company and corporation to fucking make millions off my fucking back. And my blood, sweat, and tears. And I can't have none of that fucking company. They don't offer me no stocks well, in it. that's the beauty. You feel that's what I'm saying? Of, that's why this country is beautiful in its own ways. Because you can do that here. That's a, See, the thing is, the average American can't fathom not being able to do that. Right. Like, And you can sit here just with an attitude. Like, I don't want to work for nobody. I'm doing my own thing. That's great. That's what the American dream is. Is that you can do that. Now, being a black business owner. Being a woman business owner, minority business owner, mm-hmm. shit, and sometimes even a white business owner, you're gonna find like a lot of hurdles. Yeah. Some of them that you that's not no 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 fault of your own. No, I, I, you know, yeah, um, that's that. You're 100 percent on that. Some of them, and some are, of them are your fault, your own, for real. Curve, yeah. Right. So what I'm speaking to is like in that aspect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We live in a great country. We're we're grateful for what we got. Right. But at the same time, since when does having something great allow you to not push forward to try to better it that's real and let me let me let me go back to what i said now there's nothing wrong with being a career man career woman nothing wrong with it at all 
If it feeds your fucking, if you get a good career with a good paying fucking job where you're working for somebody, but you're fucking making it and everything's working for you, you take care of your kids, your family, you own a house, car, whatever you want, do uh, that. Which a lot of people do have. Though. Right, do that. I don't have that. I don't have a problem. That's not modern day slave to me. That's you getting a wage, getting paid what yeah, you're a worth. Fair wage is a fair wage. Right. Yeah, that's business. What I'm talking about is. The mom and dad that might be working at McDonald's because that's the only thing going right now because, like he said, a lot of jobs ain't popping. They're starting to boom again because Biden and the administration, what they're talking about is creating a lot of new jobs. But if $15 an hour was the minimum wage, that mom and dad that might have to work at a McDonald's or something like that can afford to fucking live life a little bit. It's what, still going to be somewhat check to check. And let me, let's add on. Let me add to that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, they can the, live. Because when I worked at McDonald's, I was 13. What about the... The 16-year-old who's trying to save 13, up when he's 21-year-old. What year about old? the 13 to 18-year-old right. that's in school playing sports yep. that needs to learn work, that needs to learn how to manage their money, that needs to learn a taste of the real world, right? And and the, the, the joy of buying things you worked for. Or right? that 15-year-old that, so, that decided he wanted to own a house at 21. So you would you know be able to actually add to your family structure. You'd be actually able to take that $15 an hour and not only <coughs> help pay for your own college, your own car. Yeah, Mom, I might be able to help with the light bill this month. I just right. got paid and I actually got enough money to pay the light building and actually go get myself something and put in my savings. Um, it's about not putting these kids behind the a generation behind the eight ball before they start out, which is normal for us. All our generation, our generation, what we did, you know what I'm saying? behind the eight we ball. We started bro. out behind the eight ball. Now, some of it, generations before us, and with certain generations, every story ain't the same. Right. right. And if you don't know what behind the eight ball is, imagine this. We Most of us have seen Indiana Jones. You know that scene where that fucking rock is coming for him? Eventually, he got to a place where that rock stopped. Behind the eight ball, niggas, we're constantly running from this boulder that's going to run us the fuck over, nigga. Yeah, and that's and, 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 and that's without, I was saying that all without adding, adding the difficulties of being a black person right. in America. Right, with no, ad, with in no Western, add-on. Or in Western society, because it's not like black Europeans don't go through the same thing. Yeah. They're descendants of slaves. Right. There's a, something that they have to go through that is it takes time, mm -hmm. it takes generations, and it takes... A understanding from all like and that's why it gets conflicting you know and it doesn't mean that other issues aren't facing other communities right so w all of what we just said and then you add the discrimination factor on it it's it gets real you know what I mean it gets real so it's just something to think about man that like we don't really talk about a lot in society but it's something to think $15 about. $15 an hour isn't going to hurt the economy. I hear, I hear a lot of people that make 15 to $17 an way. hour or maybe even 30 an hour. That still shit, complain. That shit on that. Not, 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 yeah, they do still complain. But I'm talking about they don't want the, the minimum. They don't fight for the minimum wage increase. They're like, oh, a person at McDonald's shouldn't make $15 an hour. Says, why I'm, do you get I'm to make that fucking option? Or I'm a nurse or I'm a, I, I have to go to school to get my well, there, job. Okay. And but, I only make $20 an well, hour. Well, that's, why would that's they make fine. 15? That's fine. You it's get your 20. Shit. They only get 15. You're, and, you're, 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 that five and, extra no, dollars comes from that certification you about. got. You don't think about the inflation. Yeah. If if minimum wage is fifteen and people are like, Man, I make fifteen working at McDonalds and you want me to go to be the be the art director of your company, what do you think the the, the price is gonna go on that? Yeah, I I get more money Stop now because they're small. making fifteen Stop an hour. Selfishly, yeah. If the if the if the okay, if you think of people that make minimum wage as dirt, let's say you do, because a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. If the dirt motherfuckers, for lack of better terminology, right, is making fifteen dollars an hour in a livable wage. What do you? How do you think an employer has to come off when the employer's like, "Well, I'm not paying you dirt wages, right? I gotta pay you thirty. I gotta yeah. pay you at least eighteen, fifteen, seventeen, like to make to this is a good job, right? Now, don't we need poor people always feel far, feel sorry for wealthy people? Do you really think? How you, dare they? You, I know it's, 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 it's they brainwash. <laughs> how dare they? Brainwash they? You. they brainwash you. They do. It's why people are always. I don't mad. feel it's bad. Why people are always mad at the athlete instead of the owner. I don't feel bad for anybody who's a fucking rich hundred, so, even a hundred thousand. Why? Why, I don't feel bad. why? When you think about it, it's just like man. 
if you are in the greatest country on earth and mm -hmm. you get all these tax, see, they hide these disinformation. Right. And you get all these tax credits and tax subsidies for owning a business of a certain economic uh, group, right? Fortune 500 companies get more welfare than a single mom with three kids. They just It's just not talked about, and it's called something different, right? So with that being said, if you can't afford to pay Americans $15 an hour at least, you don't deserve to be a boss in America, fam. You don't, you don't deserve to own a business in America and, own, and have employees. You can own a business, but it better be you and your family. It better be mom and pa. I, like like me. real mom and pop shops are, I can't or it's just a family. That I can't there. afford to pay an employee fifteen dollars an hour, so I wouldn't have yeah, one. But that's but the day, but the day, but the day I could, exactly. I'm gonna make him a livable fucking wage. Exactly. I'm not gonna pay somebody something they can't fucking live off of, but they're gonna be doing work for me. Get the fuck out of here. Shit, don't. That's asinine, bro. Period. Now, how we always say that there's nuance, and the world likes to ignore it. We know how politics works. So now the minimum wage is fifteen. Mm -hmm. So the, the employers that can, they up their price to, to adjust it, right? Yep. And then the companies that's like, yo, I'm, I'm probably about to lose five employees. The same government that upped the minimum wage, the same government that fought and put 35 people on health care for the first time, right. can be the same government that comes in for small businesses mm -hmm. and do the same shit that they do for major corporations. Like, oh, we're going to help you employ or keep your employees. Because like how diff different companies get ta get $5 million tax credits for owning jets. Mm -hmm. And the average American ain't going to never be on their jet. Right. You can get a tax credit for maybe having 10 employees, five employees. Like there's ways around it to where you don't have to lose a business just because the, the minimum wage went up and you pr probably can't afford to hold down that minimum wage spot. spot. You know what I mean? It right. don't work like that. It don't. So, it's just something to think about. Like, there's nuance to this. It don't have to be black and white. You know what I mean? There is some gray area. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Senate and, and, and stuff like that is for. Right. Our government officials are there to work for us accordingly, serve us, and serve our issues. And that's why once you become an informed member of society and you start voting and you know who you've put in office, then you now know who to contact and put pressure on. And with social media, it's easier because all you got to do is just start a hashtag and then tag them in it. Like your constituents back here in Nevada or back here in New York or California or Michigan, we don't approve of this and we need help with this issue. Yeah. Said person, because you've now put the right person in office, not who the corporations wanted because right. they paid for them. So now he knows where he gets his money from or he or she. Mm -hmm. So they go and they're like, oh, this is what the people want. We need to do something for these small businesses that's now going to lose employees because the minimum wage went up. You're going to get that some simple. type of fucking bailout to it's where you can simple. you can uh, you get do it for the next three. Kinda, yeah. Okay, well, for the next five years. Yeah, we're going to do until this. You, gr you know, are you growing? We're going we're gonna, we're gonna to hand you this. Right. That's what taxpayer dollars do. That's what, that's what America does for fucking businesses. That's why it shouldn't be a pothole Fuck. in no city in America. <laughs> that's why we shouldn't have one of the shittiest infrastructures in the world. We look. There's so this. much construction imagine in this. Vegas, it blows my we, mind, dog. Because they're always building this shit here. Yeah. Imagine this. Hold Even the thought. streets. Hold that thought, though. Hold that thought. I want to go back to that. Imagine this. We'll go bomb a country mm -hmm. because of political disputes. Go build right? it right back up. And then build their shit up to the point where their infrastructure technically is better right than now. ours. Yeah. It's more oh modern my than God. ours. And, Doc, and have the you reason seen, why have we do it is because we have elite politicians mm -hmm. that serve the elite that don't want your motherfucking ass to have those good paying jobs to where it's like, yo, we're going to rebuild or refurbish every bridge in America. Have you seen every what, Af what uh, Iraq and Afghanistan look like compared to Detroit? Yeah. Compared to the Bronx. Nigga. Beautiful. Certain parts of Brooklyn. Yeah, compared to certain parts of the West and North Las Vegas. I know. There's parts in, in Afghanistan and Iraq that look so beautiful that they've built up, been built up by America. And is like, man, shit kills me. But yeah, back to the construction in Vegas. They, the Vegas would be working on their streets. All My street is always being. Cheyenne, that shit's always being worked Vegas on. Vegas dispels the myth that 
it shows you like, wait, why don't we spend more money? A person in Vegas that especially that works in the construction field, right, is always talking about they're they, always they were, working. When, when Obama introduced that infrastructure bill, yeah, I guarantee people like in places like Las Vegas was was excited because it's like we build shit here all the time. So it's like, we're always building, yeah, man. Let's. Now we're going to have jobs. Like, now it's, we don't have to build a, just a casino or a stadium or a restaurant. We can be building the roads up and building bridges right. and building all this stuff. Yeah, we yeah, are Yeah, Vegas shows you if you, you can put the money back and get all your streets done. Right, you can get right. everything built right. Good, and, and if you did looking that, good again. if we applied that nationwide, it would be what, what, it, what a dog. I watched just that one video when they were in North Korea, mm-hmm. and the the journalist from the West was like, "It was a groundbreaking thing." They don't. It's really so hard let, to even get in North let, Korea, you know, bro. Right. Time. It was like one of the first times. <laughs> and one of the things she noted, like, because she asked this guy, like, "What if I put this gum out of my mouth and throw it in the trash?" And she was like, "Oh, he stopped and was like, oh, no, 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 don't do that. Don't play like she's that." She's like, "Yeah, I know it's against the law here, but what if I did it?" And he kind of, <laughs> and she acted like she was gonna do it. And he kind of bent down like he was just going to pick it up real quick and throw it in the grass trash, like just a safer one. Like, yo, this is not what... And she starts walking off. What she, do What do we have to do? And she was showing... She was showing the streets. Bro, when I say it looks like you can, like... Eat off of them? Eat off the street? Like, the shit looked like it was polished. Like, it, it the streets were pretty... Like, everything was polished. Like, all... Right. The, it just looked beautiful, dog. And I was like, man, that's crazy because... The way their government is set up, the people don't benefit from that. But in an yeah, American, they don't but in an American <laughs> government, I don't we, mean to laugh. We, we would, that is we terrible, would benefit, but they don't. We would oh, we would greatly from it. And we would everything from schools to hospitals to just things that we all benefit from and mm-hmm. all of us need as a part of our American fabric. It's crazy how like the separatism of the cultures of liberalism and progressive behavior and conservatism and this and this and that white, black, homosexual, Christian, Muslim, all these things. We're so conflicted by these things that none of us just stop and be like, yo, let's like, let's just make sure all of us have the things that we need and desire and, and, and are, are capable. And then we can argue and disagree. But until you can, then, um... until we all know that our kid is going to have a backyard to play in, mm. like, Come on, bro. Like, why, why, is, why is it that we can't all just afford homes and, and school and, and medical attention? Because they don't want to even level the playing field in any way, shape, or form. The haves and the have-nots. That's what they push. I got it's a question. Wild. Why is there always so much fucking trash bags tied to these fucking fences over here? I have no clue. I was going to ask you the same thing, man. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I've been meaning You've been to, here longer than me. I I've thought been, you knew. I've been meaning to ask you that. Like, like dog, it just be on that fucking like, Cheyenne what they doing over fence. There? Or where are we at? This right there, yeah. Yeah, that shit is, is trash central. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see what we got next. That's another thing. Part of the infrastructure bill is cleanup. Right, but the, they, they have they're not a, cleaning uh, up Vegas. No, the but see, the, well, the thing is, there's a union uh-huh. in Vegas called the, um, uh, what is it? The um, It'll come to me, and when it comes to me, I'll let it, I'll let it be known. But there's a union here that when I'm out on all my jobs for my union, you meet, you see them, and like, that's what they do, bro. They do clean, clean up. up. And instead of like waiting for a little kid to steal a Snickers bar and you slap him on the wrist and make him do community, community service, service, like you can employ thousands of people in this community to clean up. To clean up, and, and right. in, that, in that in that workers union or whatever it's called, or uh, damn whatever, it's something like that. Mm. That's all they do. So they're going there. They got the gloves on, the PPE gear, and if they're on a construction site, they're pulling up and cleaning up nails and wood and all that stuff. If they're inside and we're building shit um, for, uh, di- you know, CES and different, like, um, convention jobs, yeah. they're, they're taking an the excess carpet and the right. different little things and stuff like that. There's women, mm. there's older people, there's young people in this <clears throat> union. And it's just like, man, they could be cleaning these streets up every day making money. Right. Like, it's just crazy. All right, man, sticking to something a little bit more political but a little heavier. Donald Trump, man. Remember when I told you that we're not... I, I really like, thought bro. we weren't talking like, about we, him We don't got to talk about bro. Trump no more. I was like, fam. He we haven't. Anywhere. We haven't for we a tried. few episodes. But if we're going to be quick on it. Fuck the the grand it. jury um, has convened, it will, will, or will convene this week, mm. in the beginning of uh, Donald Trump's uh, grand jury of, uh, trial. trial. Uh, stemming from the Georgia elections. Right. Remember the famous number was... 
11, 7, 8, 80. 11,780 votes is what he claimed that he needed from the Georgia uh, governor. Right. Um, and he was assisting on that phone call that they can just say that they recounted and found that, you know. There was that many votes. That he had the actual 11,780 votes. Right. Um, I know there's a black woman heading this investigation. She has a disdain for Donald Trump. Oh, that's all bad. Donald Trump has a history of disrespect towards black women. Especially black women of any type of power. Um, This is going to be interesting. because. So what does he face if convicted for any of it? I didn't even, I, I, I didn't even look. Uh, uh, is you know, it that type of case? Or is the, it, yeah, it is. But Because the idea that a, a, it's still crazy to me that a, a president is facing charges my g like i just never even seen that before but so we I said don't. if the democrats didn't push charges on him they was bitches they're, yeah they definitely gonna go hoe out and <laughs> and people will recognize it right that. yeah it'd be, it'd it'd be, be a very good forward. sign of weakness for Speaking the next that, two the years democrats sometimes bro that's their weakness like they can they when they have power they seem the weakest like, that's yeah right it's like bro like you got all the power like why are y'all even talking to these dudes yeah why are we not we just saying for fuck four you years, like, like man y'all better everybody just, go vote just do this why like, are we not we don't, just if y'all want to like, do something the country is spoken <laughs> do it fuck y'all like, like, you don't have to wait if you're not on this side oh, take your ass on bro i can't wait for donald trump to get convicted and get put in any type of jail for his little bitch MR's ass children, i can't man. stand like, I, just, I just can't stand that type i of can't elitism. stand the trumps at all yeah, I, can't, I can't stand that type of elitism that that type of privilege where you're better than everyone else you don't get in trouble for all the fucked up things you do never and you got do in more trouble fucked for up the shit, fucked shit up than shit everybody else do. like you literally like out here just breaking laws like left and right and you still get to walk around and chastise people and call other people thugs and other people hoodlums when they're just trying to survive, fam. In America, we have a problem of criti- uh, uh, criminalizing survivors, mm. people that are trying to survive. Like we hold, we hold the average man, especially black man and woman, to the to the highest degree of the law, like mandatory minimums. Like, oh, sorry, right? I know this is kind of bullshit, but. He has to do 15, ma'am. It's a mandatory minimum. We can't do nothing about it. But then there's there's shit like treason, and there's shit like... All and treason should be punishable by but death. But there's all these different that's like, things. It is. That's that's these, the fucking these conviction. Things, you should, all these, you're dead. All these different corruption charges and white-collar so-called crimes mm. where, okay, well, now oh, they got him. Like, that, you know, that carries five or ten. He should be doing at least three. Right, and they don't even go to jail for it, and you just like, oh, okay, so the best way to be a criminal is to be an elected official. That yeah, that's no, real. No, or because they caught Kwa, uh, Kwame Kilpatrick, Kilpatrick and, and put his ass, put his ass right in, in prison. prison, and he damn near died in that motherfucker, and he only got out because Trump wanted to spite the elite, right? And they let him out. <laughs> so, there, certain politicians, Jesse Jackson Jr., had to go to prison. For campaign fraud because of a miscalculation in campaign funds. It wasn't even proven that he used the campaign funds. Yeah. And they couldn't they, wait to put they his knew ass that he was in good friends prison. with Barack Obama. Yeah. His dad is Jesse Jackson. You come out and endorse Obama. You in could Chicago. never do anything about Jesse yep. or Obama, but we're gonna take your you broke ass. The law, we got you're you. You're going to prison. <laughs> you're going to prison. For misuse of campaign funds. Oh man. And so when you see over and over, a certain type of person get oh, get away and get away and get away. It's nice to see them finally have it's to see their nice, day in bro. court, we bro. We need to see it. Right. The country needs to see this. Right. You are not above the law. You're not above shit. You know, you're not above anyone else. Like, you're not above the law. You're not above anywhere, in anyone else. When Rayful I mean, you Edmonds, can have that profession, perception of yourself, but... came down on Rayful Edmonds, right. they put his mother in prison because they said, you know what? There's no way. That your son made all these millions of dollars, and you had dope, no idea, and you didn't know how to have nothing. So they booked right. your own conspiracy to make him cooperate with them. A woman that had been a nurse, all this type of stuff, never really did anything wrong. Like you know, your son's grown; he's doing what he's doing. I'm only bringing that to, up to say is like this is how they treat us. They thought Brianna Taylor's boyfriend was selling drugs, so they kicked in the door like thief in the night and started shooting. And you telling me that these people can falsify documents to send people to war? Yeah. They can cooperate with 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 with, with pharmaceutical companies, knowing that millions of people will die from them products. They can do. They can hold out on telling the country, "Hey, there's a deadly virus coming, and you shouldn't be at the games. Yeah. You should be locked down with you your family. You shouldn't be anywhere. You should and be if at you're home. Overweight, 
elderly or have any kind of health uh, problems. Really don't go down. nowhere. They knew this shit for months it comes out before they told us. What they do, they prepared their stock portfolios. Yeah. They sold off the stocks and, and did what they needed to do. I'm sure Donald Trump, it just came out, got vaccinated a couple months ago. But yeah, he's telling you stupid motherfuckers that the virus ain't real and it ain't serious <laughs> and you don't need to wear a mask. and all. You don't think the governor of Texas and his family and loved ones have already oh, yeah, been Ted vaccinated? Oh, yeah, Texas and all of them been, have, have got both rounds already. Have I already been vaccinated? It. You don't think that? You don't think that wealthy people that knows that you can't even come to their neighborhood and everyone in their fucking community has been vaccinated Including the employees that work in their in their community and all that, right. so they get they're in a bubble, baby. They can go to their shopping center, they can go to their mall, their park, their kids can go to their school because everybody over there has been vaccinated, and that that virus is a poor person's problem now. Right? Yep, it's a poor person's problem because we still can't even get the vaccination. Come right? on, fam. <laughs> we still gotta wait. They haven't even opened it up for us yet. But yeah, it's fuck, scary, fuck bro. Donald like, if Trump, you think I'm glad, about it, I'm glad that Donald Trump's seeing his day in court. Yeah, and that's just the first of many because he got to face something in New York. Yeah, right. Hey, power to the American people because at the end of the day, the Southern if, District of New York want that nigga, bro. Right. They can't wait because they've been watching him get away with crimes since he was a child. <laughs> right. And they're like, ooh, like, we get you, we on. get to get. Oh, yeah, Come we on, at fam. you, nigga. Come on. It's crazy, though. So, everybody keep an eye on that, man. Shout out to all the officials in Texas, I mean, in Georgia. Fuck um, Texas. Everybody in, every, the, to the governor of fuck Texas. The go, fuck the infrastructure of Texas. To the governor of Texas. Yeah. Because I'm not sure who's yay or nay that. And I've seen a lot of people of elected elected people in Texas speak out against it. Because Ted Cruz is a bitch. To the governor of Texas. The senator. Do better. Uh, <laughs> to the people of Texas, demand better. Right. Demand that they serve you better. Two more years. You only got two more years of Ted Cruz if you vote Demand him out. Demand better. You only got two more years of Teddy if you vote him out. Shout out to everybody uh, working the fight in a good fight in Georgia. Um, good luck with this trial. Yeah. I, I like to see it. I like to see it. And this is like one of the weaker tri trials that he's going to face because – this is just like election fraud and shit like that. Like, right. This ain't no. This you might ain't, you this get a slap the, on the wrist for election fraud. This ain't the fraud. sexual assault and all that other yeah. stuff that you're gonna be facing. When you now. gotta go back right. to New York, motherfucker, they they oh they ready for you. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> New York's waiting for you to get done with this case. Something lighthearted. Uh, we was to, we wanted to talk about this a while ago for some reason, man. Shout out to him. We keep forgetting to bring it up. Oh yeah, shout but out to motherfucking Shaq West, West for man. making the Give friends him a round of applause, man. for making Give him the motherfucking applause. French basketball team. He's a pro player. If you so, didn't know, he did uh He did enter the draft. Yeah. He went undrafted, got a couple workouts, and then he now is uh landed in a, in a French on a French team in the Euro League. So big shout out to We might Shaq not hear West. no more music. Um but I hope we get to see him I, in I the predict NBA. That, I predict we definitely will hear some more music because he already had a hit. And he already had a record deal. Nah, so, but I'm saying you haven't heard well, from that song. They let him take a sabbatical, probably. They let him, like, you know, his his record label. His record label is probably like, please make it to the NBA, then let's start well, releasing and records. That's a good, that leads us, <laughs> hold on, fam. That leads us into a good discussion. I don't know what kind of deal Son got, but what if he had a 360 deal? Mm -hmm. They getting a piece of that, that, that basketball bread. Are they? Oh, anything. A, three, a 360 deal means anything with your, well, your name. I, nigga, anything with, with you on it. Mm -hmm. I own your it. likeness. I own it. Period. Yeah. So that'd be. Nice I hope to he see. didn't sign a uh, 360. I'm just saying because I don't want them to. I don't want no. I don't want work. no record label getting money from him on his basketball shit. I wouldn't want a record label getting money on you from your acting shit, right? Or from your, you know, from anything from your business. From savvy. anything outside of music, I don't right. want your record label getting. You any signed type me to do money. this. Fuck that. So right. I, I hope he right. did because your your record label ain't ain't. Ain't out there being your lawyer and acting no, as they're agent. not doing nothing. They're, they're for not gonna you. send somebody to come mow your lines. And keep they your didn't. House they didn't help you get that that right. NBA tryout or right. or the NBA draft. Uh, any of that. They didn't help you get on that French team. Right. That's they just him. worried about when that next song coming out. That's all him. So that's another thing. So he probably would have time to you know do that. Like right. Put some songs together in the tuck. You can release music and still play over there. Right. You no, you saying? can for real. And you'll be big over there. You play ball for him, you'll be huge in France it as a rapper. Your market. Right. 
You'll be an international star just because you play international ball. LaMelo ball. And then let you now come to the NBA eventually. LaMelo ball It's over. The LaMelo ball effect. People laughed at LaVar ball. He took that boy every to every country. The only places they didn't play was like Africa and South America. The places that really don't matter it's not to big the on NBA, basketball yet. right? They Africa will through, be there because they got the Africa League now. You know who's commissioner is Obama? Is who? Obama. Is it? Yeah. That's sick. So like they're gonna, uh, they they go, you know, like you took uh, him, Barack look, look, Obama just, is the commissioner took, of the NBA. He took him to Africa Greece. League, that's sick. He took him to Greece. Uh huh. He took him to you know all through Spain, Lithuania, France, and Australia. Last, you know what I'm saying? But you do all that, and then you travel in Australia. The league that he's in Australia is a, a is an elite league, NBA but league, or not New, NBA they, league, but they, elite. They play league. in New Zealand. They play all over the place. So right. Like, he was traveling. You get used to playing all over the world. His brand and his recognition, and mind you, they all love the NBA. Yeah. But now you one of ours. It's like going to our college. It's like if you go to the NBA and you went to Duke or something like that in North Carolina. People from Duke or North Carolina probably are going to look out for you, like support you, maybe right. buy your jersey. Right. It's, but it's like that times 100 there. Yeah. So now it's just like, oh, man, LaMelo's jersey is still one of the top-selling jerseys in Lithuania. From the Lithuanian team he was on. Right. Think about the jerseys this cat got. And you know jerseys and shit starting to make a comeback. Yeah. Like, LaMelo got jerseys, fam. You can get one of his Chino Hill High School. You can get one of his Spire High School Academies. You can go and get one of the Lithuania jer- jersey. You can go get the Australian jersey. jersey. You can go get the, any one of the JBA, the JBA jersey. You can go yeah. get the JBA USA jersey. Yeah. And then now he's in I, Charlotte. And I guarantee. Now he's in Charlotte. Mark my words, he'll have a Puma exclusive next year. He'll have a player shoe. I guarantee it. He has one right now. He already has an exclusive? Yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah, he rocks them every game. Look him up. Like that's why he got them different color joints on every game. He's been rocking. He has some. That's not just a player Christmas edition. Ones? No, his Christmas ones. He has a signature shoe. His Christmas joints. Uh, was what's see everybody else plays in the other Pumas. Like he has his own signature Puma, fam. Like his Christmas edition ones was a uh, was an OD to the Elf, the movie. Mm-hmm. That just shows you another thing about him being young. Damn. Guess how much the Lamelo twenty twenty. Uh, uh, rookie Jim Mint Nine is going for two million. Nah, hundred grand. Luca just sold for four point something million. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Damn, yeah, that's nuts. But yeah, that's that's crazy, dog. Swag on ten, like you know what I mean. And now that he putting on, like. Pfft. Fam, that, if the crowd was in, in Charlotte, I guarantee you they'd be down there sold out every night. <laughs> He's that famous, man. Right. And he brings celebrity to the game. Like, he he has celebrities and shit coming to his high school games. You don't think they, they're going to pull he, up in Charlotte? They say they're talking about a SIG shoe for him. He's wearing what? He's wearing a Dog. player edition. No, he's not. Let me see. I'm going to show you something. Because he definitely, they be talking about him during the game. Like, And you can't buy his shoes. They say he wears a Clyde All Pro. With his signature, with his logo on it, it might have. I think it has his logo on the back. Cause it's these, and those are all. It does have the logo, but those are the ones that all wear. So he has a player edition. Dog, those. Who else wears those? There are um. What the fuck is in here? Something. They're these. Really. He just might have a one, that is a little bit different. So I've seen people in those ones, but those ain't the ones Lamelo be wearing. I just think they look alike, kind of. I don't think they they vary. They kind of got the same technology. I don't know. They're not showing him having a sick shoe. The one that they're showing is the BBB. Yeah, see, no, I watch. So his sick shoe ain't out, or I no, it's not out. But that's one thing. No, what I'm saying. You can't. I don't think you you can't buy it. Have a picture of it is what I'm saying. Cause they're still saying that that's his signature shoe is that fucking big baller brand one. Mm, yeah, that's old. And then when they look at Puma, it's the um, they say it's the Clyde. Cause I got some of those Clydes. I mean, they don't. No, they don't look like that. The NBA one, the basketball one. Yeah. But no, they're saying he doesn't have. That's so weird. It's, it's, he has different color ones of these with his logo on the back. 
Okay. Dad did the five all pros. Look at his Christmas joint and see what those people like are the same. Cause you know how Christmas cats break out their shoes and shit. Like he had those those on. Did he get voted into the All Star game? No, nope. I think that's why he. Bro, I heard some rumors like that. They kind of fluffed his like All Star vote yeah. numbers. I'm talking about the ones he played in. What do they look like? Like you saw, so they were showing him on the court. Hey, no, cause dog, I got, I, no, dog, they gotta shoot for him, cause like go to YouTube, they got reviews on his shoe, like where people like they sent them to certain sneaker heads, and I, it, okay, so I remember this one dude was hooping in them and everything. But this is from December. They're gonna, uh, we're looking at a video. Um, this is a video of him. So he's got player editions. Which, like I said, we spent hella time looking for that video and that information. But like I said, next year, he'll have a signature shoe. I guarantee you, the start of, we'll see it in the summer. That shit probably, I was gonna say, that shit probably We'll see it out. in the playoffs. I, would, I, I, I was going to say, that shit will probably come out before the season's over. Yeah, we'll see it, right? If they make it to the play, if they make, if they know they're going to make it to the playoffs, he'll wear them in the playoffs. If they don't, right he'll now. wear it probably the last couple games. And then they'll release in the summer. Yeah, they tripping. <laughs> no, they're not. They probably already, they just don't want to put it out yet. They probably want to see what his rookie season going to do and let him hype up so when they drop, they're going to sell a hell of them. That ain't how you They'd be it. selling a hell of them right now, they which they're probably kicking fair. themselves in the ass for. Like, That's fuck. what I'm saying. That was We're probably like, God damn it. Like, we should have just started the hey, season hope, with them shit. y'all messed up on that one, my nigga. Y'all supposed, <laughs> well, supposed to have that boy locked and ready to go. Right. Like, because he already had his own signature shoe and was moving them. Yeah. And they would cost, like, damn near 500 Yeah. And they not even that fresh. They like, they terrible were, They were shoes. all right. But the performance level, it wasn't that great. They like they cool. That's on what some they said. That's what all the kids said. All the ball like, brothers said. Yeah. Like they're not hooping shoes. Like these don't feel good. Well, you can't compete with the modern day technology right. of a Nike, Adidas, and shit like that. Right. Unless you're a Puma, I mean, they they didn't even can't even really compete. Well, they can, but they still got to go at it. I'm just saying that like the, these established brands and shit like that, they got more resources. They have the technology to make you, and these are kids. Oh, that, let's see who won the game tonight. When you grow up hooping, when you grow up hooping, you playing in the top sneakers. Oh yeah. So like you go from yeah, that yeah, to yeah. building your own brand, like comfort and shit like that is gonna be a big problem. Like you are gonna be like pops. I need my shit to be lit. Yeah. I'll uh, shout Hornets out to one thirty-five to one hundred two. Nigga, they put it on the Wolves. Let's see what the young Melo had. That nigga was like, that nigga Melo was letting it be known, nigga. Nigga, he probably had like 19, 20 or something like that. He had, yeah, 19. <laughs> you hella yeah. called that. Teddy, uh, Teddy Rozier at 31 on Yeah, I was about to say, the reason why I was going to say that. But guess what? I wish I'd have said this before. Let's look at the stats. 7 for 13 uh, from the field. 4 or 5 from 3, nigga. LaMelo. <laughs> Official. So, listen the thing, though. Like, 7 rebounds and 5 assists, right. nigga. I knew he was going to ball out. Like, the thing is, is LaMelo understands at a young What's age that because he can get his, Edwards like, had 19, he don't have to, he don't have to press. Oh, Edwards had a right. horrible game. 8 of 23, 1 of 10 from 3. Damn. You were just jacking shots, jacking bro. Shots. Trying to make, like, man, I'm going to get hot eventually. They're going to start him. And niggas that's why a lot fail. of basketball periods was just like, LaMelo <laughs> is the dog, number one He's pick. that guy. He should have been the number one. Should have been for sure. But that's why LaMelo also was tanking his interviews because he was trying to get to the third pick because he knew the Warriors needed Wiseman. So it was like, I know if I don't go number one to, to Minnesota, I, think it's, I guess he went in there. They, Minnesota's like, oh, he's not. He's not a good basketball IQ. He's, 
He's immature. He's I bet really... they feel bad about that right now because this nigga's looking so great no, in the they don't NBA. Feel bad. They just realize. Or like, not feel bad. They, look they realize like, because our, 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 our team and franchise has been ran like shit for the last decade. This kid has enough savvy to not want to be drafted by us. I feel, like, yeah. I feel so that like a motherfucker. We're going to take the next best thing. Like, we're going with, the, like with him. We're going to take Anthony, uh, I mean, uh, was it? Anthony Edwards. Yeah, we'll take Anthony Edwards. Which is not a bad player. Nope. But, I th- and, and give them credit, D'Angelo Russell is out, has been out. Cat uh, has just got back. But I'm just saying eight they, for they 23, right. my guy. Yeah, I mean, he's a rookie. That's a bad. But we haven't seen LaMelo. But we have not seen LaMelo do nothing like that. We've seen LaMelo have low-scoring games with high assists, which means at one point he was well, like, I'm high. not scoring right now. I'm getting this ball off. But Alley is, 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 is that sound? You know what I'm saying? There's some people that get to the league because they can drive the basket. Yeah, they create they a shot. They create a shot. Yep. And to ask him to start playing, like LaMelo understands, I'm going to miss three shots, nigga. Let me, I'm going to go get five assists first before I pull again. Right. He has that gift and skill set to do that. Everybody don't right. have that. No, real. LeBron has that. That's LeBron's. The, there's certain players that have that. There's certain scores. Curry don't even have that. Shit. Curry will go eight no. for twenty three sometimes. But Some games. But that's what most he's games to he do. has that. But he never. But but look at his assist total. That's what I mean. Most games he has. He knows so how to saying. get the ball off. As far Some as, games he just. He might have an eight for twenty something night scoring. <laughs> yeah. But that's just because the ball wasn't going in. That's like, it, no, yeah. That like it yeah. He was motherfuckers don't un- motherfuckers don't understand that. Motherfuckers be like, oh, he's yeah. jacking it. No. Sometimes but, that okay, rim is smaller than you think it is that stretches, day. Just fuck. Through stretches. through stretches, it's like, okay, on a mystery, he definitely is going to start looking for Clay mm-hmm. and get Draymond on the ticket and yep. all that. And he always just kind of makes the right play anyways. So naturally, And then like three plays, plays later, he's going to come off a right. screen and... So naturally, dog, it's just gonna, <laughs> the balance is going to work out. Right. So he don't affect his team as negative as like a James Harden would in yeah. Houston. When he would go eight for thirty or something, and they like would that. get blown Y'all out. Y'all not winning. No, Steph Curry can go for eight for twenty three or something like with eight the for clay 30, out there, and because Clay's like, gonna put up thirty, and they, and they still be competitive. Cause right, he's not forcing shots. Right, he's taking shots that the offense and the team is are creating. To take. Yep, he's just missing them. Right, you live with that. It the happens. Team, your teammates ain't even mad at you. They like, oh, your coach ain't mad at look. you. Like, Your coach is just watching like, damn, right, nigga, this is not going in for you tonight, bro. Making them shit. Right. What can you do? Next game. <laughs> it's like a great quarterback that got like four interceptions and in like one seven game. drops. Yeah. And they don't go they ain't gonna throw the team under the bus. They'll just be like, eh. I had a fucked up game. We couldn't connect tonight, man. Yeah. We ain't we, happy. I wasn't on the same page. <laughs> Shit happens, bro. Right. But like when you got that guy that like cause it's some motherfuckers that even on their good nights, they're like horrible for percentage. Yeah, you got forty nine, but nigga you shot the ball. Like, Iverson. Come on. But Iverson was in a league full of giants. Yeah, that's true. And the thing is, AI was more efficient than like sometimes, like than Houston James Rock James Harden. No, I'm not saying he wasn't efficient. I'm saying Iverson did take a lot of shots. Yeah, but it was like. Yeah, the, but you got to think about you, you got to think about it too. Who the fuck did he really have on that team taking that? Could that's shoot. what I'm saying. McKee was decent. By Eric design. Snow was a real no, point guard who was a distributor. The team, they got rid of their scores. Yeah. Larry Brown got rid of Stackhouse. And Matumbo, he he was they old. They got Matumbo halfway through that season when yep. they went to the finals. And the thing is, the idea was we got a guy that's so unstoppable mm-hmm. offensively that if we just get some defenders and rebounders that don't want to shoot, that they, that ain't trying to be scorers. Right. So there's a lot of niggas that and you saw get some rebounds. It, and you saw what happened. They ran into L.A., who finals. does it both, and they beat y'all they, ass. They ran into one of the greatest teams. In NBA history. Yeah, right? and they beat y'all ass. And, and, and they, they lost. But the thing is, they were the only team that L.A. didn't sweep that year. Yep, they were. So, even then, it was like, and Eric and uh, Lynch mm-hmm. was another scorer, and he got hurt. Yeah. And he came back in game two. But, like, he had negative. If you be out most of the season and come back in the finals, nigga, like, that's kind of hard. Yeah, it's not the. How good you are. You ain't ready to run up and down that court. Do that. And, and, and I can see you getting hurt. Against the first Shaq round. and them? I, yeah, I can see nigga. you getting hurt in the first round and come yeah. back for the finals. Yeah. But if, if you ain't been played all season. And you come season. back against Shaq and Kobe and Robert he Horry so lucky, and bro. fucking. <laughs> and Derek Fisher and <laughs> Dog. Off his yeah, and shit, bro. Like, like, throwing the ball hella high over, nigga. Like, that's when you just sit out for the rest of the season. Like, hey, I'm going to watch y'all from over here. Yeah, year, I, I hope it. y'all do. You know what I'm saying? So what we got next, baby? Yeah, fam. Are we? It's crazy. Uh, that's pretty much for the board, but I was going to, um, I want to share something with our, with our peoples, man. All right. our sin folk out there. 
And this is going to be quick and easy, man. That's what we was talking about, shit that we already be on. I just wanted to share it with the public. Our community has got to start understanding finance and investment. Because that's the real American dream, man. That's the real way. A lot of people that you see that seemingly are doing well and they're not bothered by the pandemic, but you can't count their money. You can't look at it and be like, well, wait, what are they doing? Stocks. Hey, man, it's a whole market they're, they're, out there. They're cashing out their profits on stocks that they it's have. A whole, are they here's paying, the, getting here's paid the Here's the thing like with crypto and, and stocks here. Here's the, here's the thing about it is that those are the only two ways, easy ways, easy and legit ways that you can become millionaires overnight or in the same day. Now, look at everybody who short show GameStop. Game. Who's short? Say that fucking three times fast. Short sold. Yeah. Short, short sold, sold GameStop. GameStop. Short sold GameStop. Short sold GameStop. Yeah, that's just hard, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so think about everybody that short sold GameStop. If you had a hundred thousand dollars, you became a multi millionaire within hours on that day. Yeah, I know. That's why we're ta- that's why I feel what yeah, he's saying. Crazy. Stocks and crypto, that is the easiest legit way you can become an instant millionaire. Because let's think about oh, four, 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 let's man. let's think about Bitcoin. Bitcoin at one point was fractions of a penny. Now imagine if you went and bought a million Bitcoin. That's just worth fifty two thousand dollars right now. Do the fucking math. You would have five hundred. That's five hundred twenty million and five point two billion. I don't know. Let me. I gotta do the math on that. That's a lot of money. I gotta do the because because this is the, and 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 stocks rise and fall like this all day. Stocks that you've never heard of will be worth thousands of dollars well, one, the next you day. Can play the slow play. You know what like I'm you saying? Can just go get stocks that you know the, the the grandfather stocks that you know them granddaddies that ain't going nowhere. Your oh Apple, yeah. Your Nike, your Microsoft, your Googles. It's five point two billion dollars. So if you get all of that money, um, you can get, you know it's just about putting our money in investments, and, and and investing in our communities, man, investing in our culture, investing in our families. That's the only way we're gonna prosper. It's just something I want like our community, our culture to start paying attention to. You know what I mean? That's what Bitcoin back when it was in its early stages would have cost you for a million shares. It's crazy. Ten dollars. When Bitcoin was in its formulation stages, would have made you a fucking billionaire today. Five times over. So stocks, you can go do work. that every single day. You can go work for someone and be working. And all I'm saying is like, don't part of dreaming. We support dreams on dreams dreamers on this on this podcast, man. Like dream big. Look at and right, go ahead. use someone else's dime like my man dre always preaches nigga you don't you know don't you don't have to work for someone else you can be be in, in, in further you can their have dreams, an investor and further their dreams start treating our jobs as investors yep and and do the best you can and get that money for what, that start the thing is there's penny stock out there that you can go get a couple hundred shares of and, and, and that, that be the might next Bitcoin. blow up for fucking Come thousands on, of dollars one day you buy a hundred penny stock, a hundred stocks of a penny stock, and it goes to a thousand dollars. You just killed the game. Period. Look at look at Google. Everybody from Google, from the CEO and the owners, or not even CEO, the higher upper echelon, not even the CEO, first wave they're of employees, employees. they're no, billionaires. No, the, the ones no, right they, under them. No, no, stop. Steve Ballmer. I'm gonna, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm gonna throw this alley oop to you. Steve Ballmer, the owner of the Clippers. Right. Wasn't he's an employee? He was an employee, bro. He never was the C, like he never owned Microsoft. He never was like his the boss there. He's worth seventy eight billion dollars. So the way Google, when they went public, seventy eight before Google went public, what they did for every employee down to the janitor is they gave them stock in their company. That when they went public. 
made everybody down to the janitor. Millionaire. A millionaire. Janitor still works there. I guarantee it. Because he has no fucking reason to ever leave. Because what are you going to say? You're a janitor at Google. Bitch, I'm worth more than your fucking family right now. Kiss my ass. Hey. You feel what I'm saying? Like that's And that's, how, that's why I, I like Google. Because... You made everybody a fucking nobody's a peasant in let there. That, let you that didn't be a treat blueprint. nobody. Like, you know nobody in there was treated like a peasant. Well, just, well, I'm gonna say this. Or I, an employee. I don't know how nobody's treated, right? All I'm saying is this. Or financially, go, I don't go, know personally. Financially, go work somewhere. Everybody was made up it, it, to have a level it's, play. It's about teaching economics because in our community, we teach spiritualism, we teach manner, mannerism, we teach respect, we teach toughness. We teach discipline. We teach um, all the. We, we teach all these things, and on top of that, it's time for the free slaves of America to start getting into the finance game, because when we start applying our talents and our manipulabilities and our ability to catch waves and see what's coming on and see what trends is popping, and you apply that knowledge to stock to the stock market. Um, it's endless possibilities. And I just feel like with the education I'm starting to receive and some of the things I'm starting to learn about trading, it's just, I can't imagine. One thing that our culture doesn't uh, believe in is secretism. Nope. Like if a black person creates something, they want to share it with the world. Yep. And they will teach a person that doesn't look like them how to do it better than them. Uh, for, for years, this has Inclusive. been a down. For years, this has been a downfall. It's been treated as a, as a weakness of our culture. But... Once we all are included in the same things, you know, uh, and all and all share, you know, look, think of all the people that have worked their whole lives, and they have a pension, and the people that control that pension are making billions of dollars playing the stock market with it, and then just pay them all, basically just give them back the money that they put into it over the course of their thirty, forty years. And career. if that fucking stock fails, there's no pension. Those people play with your livelihood. People lose their pension all the time for decisions they didn't make. They play and they don't get with to, like, your live off livelihood. None of the dividends. They don't yeah. get to live off none of the dividends. Like. Look at Bernie Madoff. What he did. Hella people out of their pensions. And his family is still wealthy. And they'll like. never and they'll never recoup. They're getting like ten cents on the dollar from this man. Cause he spent so much of the money already. And tied it up in so many different things. I'm going to put you on to something right and now. Bernie's the one we know about. I'm going to put you on he's to He's not the something, only one that did it. To something right now. Oh, no, he's not. He's just right. the most famous one that they caught. Or that they decided to publicize. Or He pissed the wrong people. He, he did yeah, it to the wrong person. Yeah, he pissed person. the wrong people. He was, they they, they did, politi- and, publicized And if you look at some of shit. his victims, they were powerful people. Yep. So, um, I'm going to put you on to something. I know a lot of like D boys and shit out there. I ain't gonna name nobody, but y'all, I know y'all be listening and watching. I implore you to get ten bands between even you and a few of y'all. Put that shit in the sundial. That is the um, the cannabis stock. That shit is going up and it will skyrocket because the more and more city, the more and more states that legalize the shit, the higher that stock climbs eventually. If 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 Joe does what Joe's talking about and they federally legalize it, you can't even imagine what that stock's gonna do. If we get if I can give you any type of fucking game, Sundial, S N D L is what it trades. What is the name on the trading market? Get in on that right now. You heard it here first. I got a homie that last last like. Month and one week made six hundred dollars off that stock. I'm let's, telling you, let's bro. Let's go, man. It's time for us to make our create. So we us as and I'm talking to my black people. Us as black people, we got to stop waiting for the government to give us what we feel is due. We do know that they owe us something, but there's no telling when the fuck we're gonna get that. The only way that we're gonna acquire this wealth is to acquire it our fucking selves, and it's it's all out there for us. It's, it's everywhere for us. We are the most resourceful people on this planet. We have been given dog shit. Throughout history, except for when we were back in Africa. 
and we've made it into fucking diamonds every fucking time. So it's time for us to financially own this shit. Power to the people, but like I man. said, stock is the one thing that can make you a millionaire in the same day. It's about frivolous uh, spending, not being disciplined. Niggas that um, have a whole $10,000 outfit but don't own one stock. But that outfit ain't making no money for him. But if we would have put that $10,000 in the right stock, that stock would have made hella money for him. They might have made 100 bands off that stock in a couple months. It's all about what you know, bro. It's no longer who you know. It used to be who you know. Now it's what the fuck you know in this game. Because knowing the nigga who's on doesn't mean that nigga going to put you on ever. He he might overlook you the whole time you know him, bro. And you got all the things that he needs in this corner. You got to do it's, it your motherfucking it's self. It's humanistic. You know, it's humanistic. Um, some, <coughs> some humans share information. They learn something. They're natural educators. They're, they're passer on. Uh, they, they, they pass on information. If I die with all this have, knowledge, it's like money. I'm just taking it with me if then, I never gave it to nobody. And then you have others that that's just not their nature. They they it's not a, a negative or a positive, it just is what it is. Dog, I so saw, for okay. every one person that understands something that you need to learn mm -hmm. and they're not willing to pass on their knowledge, there's another person that has that knowledge and and is grateful and will be glad to share it with you. Uh, the responsibility of the person or the individual is to seek knowledge and pass and on apply knowledge that shit. and once you see that it's working and, and you vetted it pass that shit on that's a, that's that's what they mean when they say leave the door open yep and and generational wealth doesn't even just stand for money generational wealth can be knowledge that you've passed on in that community and made your community better and there was a video of two, of one dude criticizing the video the original video was a woman saying like don't you hate those people when you ask them like what ha like how'd you get on what'd you do and they give you them run around and it's like yeah a lot of sleepless nights and you know blood sweat and tears and and you know I, I have to make a lot of sacrifices but never tell you what the steps were what the sacrifices were what kept them up at night and then the dude came and was like defending that. Like, yeah, you know, people don't want to share what they did. They went through all types of shit. They shouldn't just have to give you the information and give you the leg up. What the fuck is wrong with helping the, giving the next motherfucker something that you didn't have? Stop looking at it as a fucking competition. Us as black people, are we are not in competition with each other. We need to be competition with this fucking, this 1% that's against us. About the this, 1% is against all people. It's, it's the 1%. Or not the 1%. We need to be in competition to everybody that's against us. Period. We should not be in... I'm not in competition with this man in any way, shape, or form. He eats. I feel like I eat. I eat. I'm going to make sure he eats. Period. Point blank. That's why we do this together. We could have done this with anybody. We don't trust everybody. This is a business me and him run together. We have to trust each other 100% with every choice we make in this motherfucker. And I trust him if he ever makes a choice. He's going to consult me and I'm always going to consult him. But I can trust him if he ever makes a rash, fast decision. It's going to be something that benefits this. Right. Right. Um. Or if he comes across some knowledge, some stock that's blowing up, gonna he's going to share it with me. If yeah. I come up on something, Let like I, helping him with his, helping his deed or shit and trying to get his shit pushed along, I'm going to make sure I give him every information that helped me get the little bit of money I got back in the summertime. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, you just got to it, – it's – I could be an asshole and not tell him the steps and be like, man, you know – it's, per, it's 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 a lot of sleepless nights. It's a it's lot of on the phone. No, you just it's got characteristics like it it's characteristics, and you can't ask people to not be in a character. You, I mean, everyone has that friend that's like a mystery, and you're like, damn, bro, you, I didn't know you know how to do this, and their their response will be like, well, you never asked. That's real, but, but there are ones friend, that you, right. You're then you have that one friend that get it off. that no matter what, if they learn something new, mm -hmm. they're gonna share. Hey, though, did you know that? 15% of the people in the country do this. Hey, did you know? And sometimes that's annoying to people. 
Sometimes that comes off as oh, this nigga thinks he knows everything. No, that's a nigga but trying then, to share knowledge with but, you. But we have to understand that sometimes that's people having knowledge of something, right? And and having a need to share it, right? Some people have a gift with words, and it it, it makes them do rap music, and they do they make they write lyrics and they right. write plays, right? Some people write those things and put them in their drawer, but you have and to, then there's another sector of people that when they write those things. They're they they're, they're they're obsessed with figuring out how they're gonna get it out to the world. Right. They have to share it. But you also have that third person that won't help you with shit. You have the one person that will hoard every piece of information. You just see him shining and everything, and will never, right. ever put you on to what they got going. Right. Right, it's like because they look at well, you, you like, as like competition. Jacket, I've been looking for the one of those. Where you get that from? Oh, fam, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, my girl got my it. Girl, from so you know, and then nah, and then you good. go to the store that you know that you both frequent, and it's thirty thousand of those jackets on the rack, and they don't sell. Oh, like, this where you got them from? Yeah. So it's some just, people. That's what I'm saying. It's personality based. Like some people are like that. Some people nah, feel like every gotta, little thing is exclusive. Like a new piece of equipment comes out, I got it, and it's making. It, we don't have to edit no more. Right. And then, you know, you, you start putting out videos at a clip right. where your other people is like, yo, how you getting these videos out so fast? Man, we just working. Yeah, and I, and I can't I'm ever... Ble- I'm I, blessed. Right, I can't ever be that person. If somebody hit me up and asked me what this was, asked me what computer what that was, what it is I make go live, what fucking mic this is, what mixture board sitting in front of Keem, gonna I'm going to tell you all fucking day. I'm not in competition with you. I'm trying to get us on. Is it comp? Some people like do view it as competition. I think the ones think that are like people, that view people, it as competition. I, that's you're right. To an, I believe you, I agree with you to an extent. I, I think that some people view it as competition, and then I some don't. people also view it as like I, I try share, to take like my sharing, ego. Like sharing is a weakness. Nah, I don't. I don't think that's real. I feel like the people who don't share knowledge are the ones who feel like you're in competition. They're giving you a leg up on them. Well, that's what I mean. Some people feel, okay, so, hey. Okay, there's a story out there. I'll use this. AI, it's a story with AI that just um kind of surfaced. I forgot the player's name, but when he was at Georgetown, it was a bench player that was a walk-on. Mm-hmm. So he ain't play that much, but he used to guard AI in practice. And he was a good defender. So the coach, you know, he was kind of a star in practice. Coach would make sure he was always on AI or one of the better players. And on offense, he was all right. Right. But he's like an Eric but Snow. He, but he had one move that was deadly. Oh. And it, and it was the crossover. Yep. And he crossed over that, that wicked way. And it was just something that they developed in his neighborhood that this dude had brought him to college. Right. And AI said that he used to hit him with it so much that he was like, damn, that shit's dope. Like, and he knew, like, I need that move. Yeah. But his ego, he's like, man, it took me a couple years to ask him couple seasons because he was like man i didn't want to like give him the head the leg up like oh i'm, you out, got here, I'm out here dm this nigga up and like i crossed this nigga and, oh yeah i'm better over again him, yeah. right? you know what i'm saying like i should be starting and you know but how sometimes that's, eventually, you bread you in grow, eventually you so, grow and put your fucking AI ego did, aside was realized like i need that nah, to this go shit to is NBA. bigger than that yeah this shit is bigger than that. Like, that's, I can take my shit to the next this level. Could, and it did. Like, and it he, changed the game. Come on, bro. And, <laughs> it changed and so the game. he said he stepped to him and was like, look, dog, I need to know. And and the cool thing about the story, what he was really getting at, is the guy shared the information. He could have been like, I'm not telling oh, you that. I mean, that's really, my... it's just something I do. I don't know, dog. I just do it. And AI would have had to respect that. Yep. Like, oh, okay. Well, that's just your talent. But he showed AI, like, nah, you know why I always get you? This is how your feet are. Anytime, I don't just do it all the time. Yeah. And you see some people that don't understand that, and they just be trying to cross you. No, and so they just the feet. and well, they, and he shot him and he told him how to apply it to the angles and right. and he worked on it with him. He's like he really worked on. It. And then it's like if you see you as a ball, you see a nigga leaning more to his left, you gonna put then, him to his right. And then AI you start know what I'm saying? you know start putting his game and the the rest is history. Right. Who when you say crossover, who do you think of? That's what Hoopers don't un- that's what people like novice basketball players don't understand. It's like you're not just watching you're not just dribbling a ball. You're looking at his body language. Like nigga, okay, you sway to the left, I'm about to hook you to this right, nigga. It's no because different, you're not gonna get here fast. It's no enough. different than watching martial arts. Or if your feet or, watching, or if watching. your feet are outside of mine this way, I know if I move this way, you're not gonna have a good chance. I'm gonna get you. 
his technique and right. all and all these things and like. You know, whether it's football, Football's whether it's the martial, same way. It's like yeah, a receiver is going to look at you like, oh, you're pressing me? Oh, I'm about to uh, – gone. Nigga, I know what you're going to – oh, you're playing off? Cool, I'm about to cut right – nigga, I got you. Like, it's just – people don't – people, like – this is off topic, but this is just makes sense. It just – it 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 rolls in. It's like the conversation you had as an athlete shouldn't get paid that much. Why? There's technique to being an athlete. It's not just freakish fucking skill. Whoa. Because if you're the fastest player on the football field, but your hands aren't that great, what are you going to be good at? You're not going to be a punt great receiver. Yeah, you're not going to be a great. No, because your hands aren't great. You might fumble the punt return. Yeah, you're just a fast motherfucker. You'll have somebody back there to catch that shit for you and pitch it to you. You know what I'm saying? So you got to have technique to everything. It's not just about being a freakish athlete. Well, it, LeBron it, has say, technique to his game. You can't say that you're with a free market. You can't say that you're all about patriotism and right. oh, America the beautiful, the great, you know, American dream, and then feel in your mind that someone doesn't deserve what they can command on an open market. That's just the way America when works. When you, when you can't do a tenth, not fuck a tenth. What's a little less than a tenth? You can't do a hundredth, millionth. I can't do a millionth of what fucking LeBron James can do. So how the fuck would I? Well, me, just me being a person, how could I say he can't command a hundred plus million at any time for however many years? Thirty million for one well, year. Well, it's stupid because if if, if you think about it, they go uh, kill athlete, me on a basketball court. Take an court. athlete that makes forty million a year. Well, what does the team make? Like, what does employer his what does his, his employer make? Right, like, so when you take that argument and apply it to minimum wage, it's the same thing. Yeah. You're saying fifteen dollars should be the like the the cutoff. Or, or the the ceiling, the floor. the floor. I mean, because that's sustainable as it contributes to society. Because if you're like a decent, successful business owner, you're making at least a couple hundred thousand a year, maybe even a hundred fifty, right? Small business. You Possibly. can't afford to pay fifteen dollars an hour. That's your fit. So you made a hundred thousand because that's about fifty thousand if you got a couple employees. That's not to mention this tax break you're going to get because you're paying your employees more. You don't think Biden's going to put a tax break in a in a plan for you, make that $15 an hour? Well, the people have to ask for it as well. It's, it's not about And that just, makes sense. And, and, that's, I, and that's not going to – I'm not going to look at that as a handout. I'm going to look at that as a – this. That handout shit is made up for, right. for when poor people get it. Right. Like it's not – That's not a wealthy handout. Wealthy people do get handouts. Just like if, you, if, the, if the term is handout, Jeez, let's stick to that term. Americans get handouts from the American government. That's the whole point of having a government. Right. They take our money out of our checks before we even get them, most of us. So what are we talking about here? Yeah. Like At the end of the day, that's what the money's for. And and, and just because what, what the corruption, it's the fact that certain people become elite. They have so much money, they start paying politicians to do things in their likeness. And they don't feel like they have a responsibility to, to the common poor man. And that's where you have to be be careful. America has checks and balances in its system within right. to make sure that we don't get too far one way or the other. Right. That's the beauty of it. But overwhelming the overwhelming growth aspect comes mm -hmm. in time where it's just like, okay, well, we do have to agree to disagree on some things, right? Mm -hmm. A man that works the majority of his life should be able to go home and enjoy his living space. Yeah. Shouldn't have to worry about the little things like you shouldn't be able to inflate the world around the average person mm -hmm. and stifle their growth and then ask them to enjoy it. Yeah. That's like, bullshit. so when we talk about the inflation going up, the wage is not going up. Mm -hmm. Everything else is going up. You know what I mean? And you're losing the government's losing, like allowing states to st uh, subtract jobs. From the economy, and stifle the whole. So, like, fucking if you're gonna shit. if you're gonna make the the federal minimum wage seven something dollars, seven dollars <laughs> and some change, like it should be. In a, it, you better make sure everybody can have a job. Oh, like, so man. if I need two or three jobs to survive, there's there's people that would love to have two or three jobs, but they, but they can't do that. But, but the idea they barely having, got the one. The idea of having three jobs when the average person is trying to fight to get one job, right? Come on, yeah. And then you want people to you you want to talk about crime and shit like that going up and the inhumaneness within society. Well, you got everybody's parents stressed the, the, the fuck out. The government is fucking inhumane. You got everybody's parents stressed the fuck out working. 
their ass working off. Working their ass off, and they don't have time to fully parent their children, right? So now TV is parenting them. Mm-hmm. The music is parenting Social them. Social media. Social media is parenting Cell phones. Them, right? <laughs> Come right. on. It's not rocket science. No. This shit is, is simple to figure out. And that's why it's important for common people to vote and put common people in office. Because here's the thing. Why, uh, why, common sense all, is not common no more. Think about this. It's that always corrupt. Not... It's always corrupt. Right. When millionaires speak for poor people. Oh, yeah. Why would? Let's just think about it. You're worth hundreds of millions. Why would you want to be a U.S. senator for a couple hundred thousand? Why would you want to be a U.S. senator for a couple hundred grand and have the stressful job of being a u.s senator as as a person worth hundreds of millions it's because you're greedy and you want more money yep and you can and you can make it happen if you're part of the vote for tax breaks and shit like that that you should have to be within the majority in economics economically so what i mean by that is if you're going to run for the presidency or or u.s senate or congress any elected official you should have to be of the people so a majority of the country is below the, the poverty line. Mm-hmm. The representation should come from the, from people below the poverty line. And yeah, because well, they're the only ones that have their they're and, gonna have and, it and out, wealthy have their people at heart. And wealthy people, wealthy people ain't ever gonna give a fuck. It, with wealthy people, it doesn't matter who the president is. It doesn't right. matter who the president is if you're extremely wealthy or extremely poor. No, it don't. So <laughs> they that's what needs to be fixed. If those things could be turned around and fixed in some kind of way, then yeah, man, the sky's the limit for this nation. The sky's the limit for this country. But well, Until we start addressing those things, come on, man. Be in the same boat we are in. I guarantee you, if everybody was making good money, racism will go down, sexism will go down, xenophobia and homophobia will go down. Classism goes down. Because the thing is, is like I'm enjoying life. I can actually go do other things and pique my interest. Why do I care what black people do if I don't like black people? Yeah, you're. Why do you're, I care what gay people do if I don't like gay people? If I have enough money, if I'm for surviving, right. I'm doing good. I'm right. spending time in things that I like, investing in myself and my future. And now I don't got to worry about y'all at all. I don't have time. That's the thing. We have too much idle time on our hands, especially with COVID, everybody being at home or working less and shit. We're just on our phone and shit and getting a lot more lazy and complacent. It's time to take your spot in the world, take your stance. It's on you to do it. And... You know, I could do better at it myself. You're talking to somebody who who's trying better to practice what he preaches. That's why I talk to you without any ego, because I'm a man who knows I could do better in a lot of the situations. I'm telling everybody else we need to do better. So I'm growing at the same time as I'm telling you to grow. He does the same thing. We grow every day. You know what I'm saying? It's the only way we're going to be better than the day than we were yesterday. You know what I'm saying? And collectivism has never failed. Right. All through society and all through history, you hear these great tales of people coming together to do great things. Um, as cliche as that might sound, it's real. It's it's you know all the funny thing is all cliche things are real. Yeah, they came it, from it's something. About, it's about it came the practice, from something real. It's about the practice of of the person, and do for self. Do for self doesn't mean I got it and it's all about me, myself, and I. Do for self means hey. By by bettering myself, I'm going to better those around me. Right. Because I understand that we as a people need uplifting. As we as a people, as a society, need inclusion. So if I start moving in an upright position and I start including people, those that are that care for me, those that admire me, they'll start doing the same. Um, it, it's simple, yet it's it's a very difficult task, right? Yeah. So it's just one of those things that you know we as, we here at the ATS, man, we. We're all about open speech. We're all about speaking freely, and we're all about having dialogue. So it was just something, and when we have these conversations, it's not just for me and Dre. Like, hey, y'all, y'all get not even you don't have to get in our comment section, but it's just something to talk about amongst your tribe, talk about them amongst the people that you're you're in business with, and the people that you see and, and, and are around every day. Because once we start tackling the the financial gap in this country. It's going to be better served for everybody, right? including the wealthy. The board's gone. Huh? You got anything else you want to get into? No. All right, man. Well, we're going to wrap it up here, man. This is your boy, Kim Sincere. And this is your boy, Doc On, and that's another episode of the Always, Always Talking, Talking Shit Show in the books. <laughs> you know, just... 
take heed in every piece of advice you get out there. Drop knowledge on everybody with you. And uh, we out of here. Good night. Who always talking shit, show? Oh, yeah. Fuck how you feel. <laughs>